Hey, let's start the show. For Thursday, February 20th, 2020, it's This Is Only a Test, the official podcast of Tested.com. Don't hate me. Don't hate me, Will. There it is. So I just turned, I just called my agent. Unfortunately, I didn't have your intro queued up. Wow. Th- there was a lot of prep work and I didn't have that one done. What a, what a kick in the, kick in the groin. I uh, will play sir. out. We'll go out with that. No, one. it's too late for this. Oh my God. You can't recover from I'm this. I'm so sorry. Thanks for joining us, everybody. I'm Jeremy and this is uh, my cohort, Will Smith. <sighs> Uh, you know, you see him every week on the podcast. It's just the two of us every week. It's uh, me this is and, a perfectly normal pod. Me and Will. Hello, Jeremy. How are you doing? Uh, tested founder, Will Smith. How, how, oh, thanks for having me. Uh, absolutely. I am so glad that you answered the call. Uh, <laughs> Norman Chan is on uh, assignment yeah. in Wellington, New Zealand. Is that a secret? No, because uh, they've been tweeting. Did they tweet it? it? Okay. Yeah. Uh, Joey has has tweeted that he's there. Mm. Uh, what they're doing is a secret. Yeah. And so I, I don't even know. I think they're building death robots. So that's my theory. That's a perfectly legitimate theory. Yeah. Adam has the friendly robot over there now. It's the murder robot in New Zealand, <laughs> you know, to defend the borders. And our good friend Kishore Hari was to be here and then less than 24 hours ago said he has a sick child. He can't come in. You know, often when I say I have a sick child, it means I have really bad diarrhea. <laughs> So that's my theory. It sounds like you weren't doing too well on Saturday. We've had a bad, like this has been a, my, my parents have been in town, which has been great. It's lovely to see them, to spend some time with them. Got to bring them by the shop. That's great. Yeah. Ryan met them and they said yeah. they, were, they were delightful. It's the first time I've ever heard that literally. But he loved them. Yeah. Well, Ryan's very personable. So, uh, but then the kiddo busted a 104 degree fever on Saturday morning. Whoa. Yeah. And then I got food poisoning on Saturday night. And, and then Netflix keeps canceling my service. So, like, it's been a real bad week, Jeremy. It's been real bad. <laughs> Wait, no. It, what, is Netflix at the top of that list? Or is that somewhere near the bottom? And look, I just want to Netflix and chill. How do you have a service that cancels on you? Are you not paying your bill? This is a question I had as well when I called them last night at, nine, at 8 o'clock. And was like, hi, my service keeps getting canceled. And when I looked at my credit card statements, every time this happens, I get charged another $15. What do you mean keeps getting canceled? Well, this is the third or fourth time this has happened in the last, let's say, six months. And I uh, get an email from Netflix that says, hey, we're sorry to see you go. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't want to go. <laughs> I'm still here. I like Netflix. I've, I've, I've been paying you guys for like a decade. I'm not dead yet. Yeah, I used to have discs. <laughs> you used to send me discs. I remember We've been discs. friends for that long. Yeah. And so I, I got on the customer support. I hit the, the talk to a person on the internet button, which said it'll take eight minutes. I you, mean like, the, you mean chat? Chat. IRC? Yeah, yeah, yeah. chat. And uh, I was like, it's going to take eight minutes. I was like, that seems a bit long, but okay. And I started talking to them. And I was like, hey, here's what's happening. It's really weird. Um, I keep getting these emails that say, we're sorry to see you go. Uh, if you'd like to reactivate your account, press this button. So then I don't press the button because you never click links in email. Smart. Yeah. I type Netflix.com into a browser. I go there. I type in my username and password. And it says, hey, you're not subscribed to our service anymore. Like, that's really fucking weird because I didn't unsubscribe from this service. But you had an account. It just said you were deactivated. Well, when you, it turns out when you, when you, when you cancel your Netflix, Netflix subscription, it keeps your stuff for 10 months. Okay. So I turn it back on. No. And I'm like, you get charged 15 bucks. And I get charged 15 bucks, 16 bucks, 15.99. Jeez. So. I, I got on the live chat and I was like, hey, here's what's happening. I don't know what's going on. And also, by the way, you've charged me four times in the last month and a half. Four times? Yeah, I paid $60 for Netflix this month, Jeremy. Four? It's not great. Wait a minute. Why didn't you solve this after the first cancellation? I didn't realize that they were charged. I didn't look at the credit card statement to see if they were actually charging me. I thought it was just like my, I, th- I thought what was happening was I was having a payment processing because my Bank of America card uh-huh. had to be replaced twice in the last month for reasons we don't need to get into. <laughs> okay. All right. And... So every time they would try to charge it, it would cancel. And I assumed I, they just were sending me the wrong message, which was a bad assumption on my part. Okay. So anyway, the TLDRs, I called them. At no point does the customer service person apologize. At no point do they say, you know, I'm sorry you're having this problem. What can we do to help you? 
longtime customer, person who's been paying us money for the last 10 years. Right. I mean, I realize it's like $15. Who cares? You would Because they just use a bunch of script, pre-scripted phrases that the computer tells them to say. I, I did tech support. I know how that works. I mean... And so you'd think that an apology would be one of the pre-scripted phrases. So somebody told me that they train CS people never to apologize now. Express oh. empathy... But don't apologize for a fault in the service. Oh, that's like being a parent. <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, Comcast used to apologize. When Comcast would break, I'd call them and be like, we're so sorry you're having this problem. What can we do to make it better? <clears throat> yeah. I, I, so all along the way, I was like, look, here's the, here's the situation. Single use password. It's only used on Netflix. It is 24 or 36 characters long. Symbols, letters, numbers generated automatically, saved in an encrypted vault. Wow. No shared account. You are the, you are the perfect case study of if, how to if, do a password. If they offered two-factor, I would use two-factor. Yeah. There's no no shared account. The only people that have access are my seven-year-old daughter who definitely cannot use the online web chat because she doesn't have access to a web browser anywhere. Web chat? Wait, they canceled by web they chat? They canceled via web chat. So he sent, me, he sent me a transcript. No. You have of, a, a chat log of, ha- of this? Of the cancel. Oh, my God. Yeah. So. Someone actually has infiltrated your account then. I, this is like well, unquestionably. So this is what they, they say that they were logged in. I think that the person who canceled just hit the support link because you don't have to log in to use the support link and oh. said, hi, I'm email address, yeah. first name, okay. last name. I'd want to cancel my account. And, and like, just to be clear, they were dicks about it. They weren't like, oh, hey, thanks for your help. They were like, my name is Will Smith. My email address is blank. So I came here today so you can please close my account because I'm no longer to use this website anymore. Direct quote. Well, why would they have to tell them the email address if they were logged in as you? It's the first thing they ask yeah. when you call customer service. Elementary, my dear Watson. Yeah. So it shows you already requested to cancel your account online. The cancellation will take effect on March 5th. You can use the service until that day and the cancellation will be automatic. Okay, but can you just delete my account? Would you like to cancel your account, the account effective today instead? Deleted my account to blank. And then they blanked that part out. I don't know what it said. Deleted my account? To blank. What the heck It's like mean? 20 characters to its own. Right. Yes, your account is canceled effective today and you'll receive an email confirmation within 24 hours, which is the email confirmation I got that said, we're sorry to see you go. Yeesh. Um, All right. So you think this has happened four times in the past month? It's happened four times since December. So a month and a half, two months. This is gross. Yeah. So... You, and, and just to be clear, when it happened in December, change the passwords. Yeah. I didn't log out of all the existing accounts because changing your password on Netflix doesn't re- revoke the OAuth tokens or whatever right. internal authorization. So I did that this time. Change the password. Maybe change, change the email address. You did that? I did that today, yesterday. Okay. So we'll see what happens. Okay. I think you're good now because they don't know well, the new email address. I want my $60 back. Well, that's true. But you won't be canceled again. Well, look, if I don't get my $60 back, I will be canceled again, <laughs> just to be clear. <laughs> I believe it. I because, believe it. Well, look, I, yeah, anyway, that's, this is, I feel like I've not gotten $60 worth of value out of Netflix in like two years. So. Really? No, I mean, my daughter does. That's the thing. But she has infinite other places. Like she has Disney Plus now. Right. She's good. It's only $5 a month. It's funny how much less I do watch Netflix now we have Disney Plus. I mean, as, yeah. a, as a family. I watched The Witcher. Mm-hmm. That was pretty good, yeah. I guess. I didn't know what was going Jeez. on. It was all jumping around all over the place. Who knew what happened there? That's extraordinary. That's yeah. some, why would, that well, is just mean. That's so, mean-spirited. So there were two things that irked me about this. Oh, One, the no apology. Uh-huh. I think that's reasonable. I think you should say, I'm sorry you're having this problem. Even if it's not, even if it's not, I'm sorry we made a mistake. I'm sorry you're having this problem. What can we do to help? You know, you know one of those uh, disingenuous... Uh, 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 oh, the unapology? The I'm sorry if I made you feel that I'm way. sorry I offended you, Jeremy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They could give you one of those. I, that would have been an improvement over the current the status quo. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The other thing I'm annoyed about is I gave the signals. I am a competent user with good security practices, and I'm not some like I'm not some dirtbag trying to cheese a free month of Netflix on a free trial or something, right? Clearly I've been paying them for a long time. I'm interested in retaining the service. Yeah. I'm not trying to get something for nothing. What and I, I realize that's what they could deal with most of the time, probably is like Hey, my boyfriend canceled my Netflix account when I was two episodes from the end of, of whatever, you know, the West Wing. Are, are you actually worried about them mischaracterizing you and thinking that you're just no. a swindler? I'm, I'm worried that when I was like, hey, I have a problem. I'm worried that I have a legitimate security problem on my end. Exactly. And they're not giving me any of the information needed to, to solve yeah. that problem. It's like, I love Google's thing where they show you the last 10 logins to, yeah. to any of your accounts. So you can do that with Netflix. Ah. But it only shows you streams. It doesn't show you logins to their sites. 
So I went through all of the IP addresses, including yeah. the IPv6 ones. It's not good enough. Looked up for geolocation, and they're all my IPs. Oh, nice work. Yeah. So nobody's streamed anything on my Netflix account for more than a year, except for me, my okay. daughter, and my wife. Okay. So they don't have access to your account, or they would have tested that, I would imagine. Or they're just logging into the web interface and canceling my fucking account. <laughs> that, but that just seems... It seems like a lot of work. It does. Yeah. Okay, so what else is bothering you? You said there's like three things. Well, those things. are the two things. The All lack right. of an apology and the fact that they treated me like a chud. <laughs> okay. Those are, okay. I almost said, do you know who I am? But I didn't because I knew the customer service guy wouldn't know who I was. I, it's not a reasonable expectation. He might assume you're someone else. I mean, look, that's his problem, not mine. <laughs> okay, I have a story about a company that did me wrong. And it's in a very, very different way. Okay, I, me. I ordered... Are we just doing what grinds our gears up front? I have a I have a thing for that. Yeah, play the music. What, what annoys you, Jeremy? See, now I have uh, now I have the ability to play to play the good music. Oh, you play the music for yeah. you, but not for me. I see everything. <laughs> Things that annoy me. So, there's a scooter company called okay. called Unagi, right? Ah, like Ross's fighting style from Friends. They were a uh, they were a Kickstarter about about uh, eighteen months ago. Is it like an electric scooter? Yeah. Okay. And uh, and I my family we had an electric scooter. Scooter got stolen when we brought it to the grocery store, and it vanished. And and I was our, my family was using the scooter in order to get to the park, which is a whole half mile away. And the kid, that's a roughly a seven minute walk the by my math. The children have no excuse if they have an electric scooter to go to the park to throw frisbee. But if they don't have an electric scooter, then they're like, ah, oh, dad, I don't have to walk. And then I have to deal with that. Are I, you riding your boosted board to the wanna, park? I ride the boosted board. Child <laughs> rides the electric scooter. So I wanted to replace stolen electric scooter. And, yeah. and this one seemed like a good choice because it is dual motors. Ooh. Like the boosted board. Like front board. and back or two on the back? Yeah, row? yeah, yeah. No, both front and back. And you get a lot of traction motors, with that. Which in San Francisco means something because yeah. it means you can get up the hills. Yeah. So, um. So do you make both kid ride, kids ride the same scooter or no, do you do one at a time? No, dude. I got two. What? Right? Because oh, Black, brilliant. Black Friday, yeah. you had to get two to get the deal. Oh, perfect. So I go all in. I get 25% off. I get two of these scooters. Black Friday. It'll be there in 30 days. Right? I'm hoping, so you got it just after Christmas, in I'm time for hoping, New Year's. I was hoping to get it by Christmas. Yeah. Didn't get it by Christmas. Oh. January comes around, no scooters. I call them up. I say, where's the scooters? They say, there's a problem with the red ones. We can't get the paint working. We're going to send you, but we can send you the blue one. I said, all right, send the blue one. Send me, uh, and, and, and we'll deal with it One later. blue, one blue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two blues. Uh, and in fact, I think at that point, I said, just change the red to, to black, if you can do that. Yeah. I said, great. Okay, we'll get you the blue one right out, right away. Three days later, two blue scooters arrive, okay? Perfect. I'm like, all right, well, maybe these are my scooters and I have two blue scooters. I call them up. So I got two blue scooters. They say, that's weird. We only thought you got one. I said, no, I got two blue scooters. They said, we'll send back a blue one and we'll send it, we'll send it to the black one. I said, great. send it back? So I, I, it's like a 40 pound box and it's sizable. I put it on my car. I drive it to FedEx. I put their return label on it. I throw out my back, put it on the, the conveyor belt. Wow. And off it goes. I'm a good customer. Yeah. The day I received the scooter, I returned it to him, right? Yeah. Then, Hero. three days later, two black scooters arrive, right? The guy, FedEx guy comes, he gives me a black scooter. I said, thank you. And he says, hold on, I'll be right back. I'll get the other one. He goes back, I'm like, what other one? He brings me, I got two black scooters now. This right? sounds like a real win on your part. So now I'm thinking, oh, well, maybe I got a free scooter, right? Yeah. So then I put them both in the closet. Everything's in the closet because now they're going to be birthday presents, by the way. Yeah. So <clears throat> don't listen to the podcast, Jeremy's <laughs> No, it's, the birthdays have come and gone. Oh, okay. so th that's why I can talk about it. Oh, you already it. missed the window. So then... Um, I, I, I start telling people, this is, we're still weird, a scooter company. I, they sent me two extra scooters, and I had to send one back, and I got another one in the closet. And then the day I tell Kishore and Norm about that, I go back home, waiting for me at home, two more scooters. <laughs> have you notified the company of this problem, I'm, this error? In your, I, this is like bank error in your favor. I now have a closet full of Unagi scooters. I'll give you scooters, 50 right? bucks for a scooter right exactly, now. Exactly, exactly. And like they're not terribly cheap, even at twenty five percent off. They like they weren't terribly. They yeah. weren't like the cheapest scooter ever. They were a few hundred dollars more than the cheapest. Scooter. Yeah. So, uh, I two motors. So I finally like I I I call them up and well, no, actually I don't because because the birthdays are tonight. I just want them out of sight, out of mind. Yeah. They they email me say, hey Jeremy, we see you received your scooters. We're really happy to see that. 
But we also see that you received two additional scooters, which is not the correct number I'll bring to your attention. Yeah. It's, we, you received two more scooters. Would you mind sending those back? I said, well, sure, I'd be happy to send those back. Um, why don't you give me a call on Monday and we'll talk about it because I don't want to bring in the FedEx. You guys can send a carrier. Right? Yeah. So they, they call me up on Monday and, uh, and I tell them that uh, I'd be happy to send them back. How did this happen? We don't know. It's so strange. The only thing we can come up with is you have the same first name as our CEO. <laughs> So that's like their, that's their number one theory. The CEO is just getting <laughs> dozens of scooters delivered to his house. Or anyone with his he name. personally tests every scooter that gets shipped out. <laughs> so um, I, I said, by the way, you actually sent me three scooters. And, and they're like, what? We had no idea. I said, yeah, you sent them three. So they sent me three labels. And, uh, and they, set, they set up the FedEx arrival time so that he would come and pick them up. I said, yeah. great. I said, you know what? If there's anything you could do about you know, getting me a, a deal after all of this hassle, I, I would actually buy a third scooter because my wife now wants a scooter. Like my whole, my whole family would want, have like an EV. We could go in Golden Gate Park and yeah. like on a Sunday. Go like a gang. Exactly. You get leather jackets. We would have to get special jackets. Yeah. And uh, she says she'll look into it. And uh, so FedEx guy comes, the, uh, side story, FedEx guy comes and then keeps driving because he took one look at my house and assumed I wasn't home. And then I hop on said Unagi scooter, the one that arrived and, yeah. and I go get him. And, and he says, oh, okay, I'll be right there to pick him up. So he comes back, he gets the three scooters, off they go. And uh, and th th thankfully I have not received another scooter, but I, I'm just waiting. Every time I see that FedEx truck go by, you, like you, you could just open like, the door and it's like one day it's one scooter, the next day it's two scooters, the next day it's four scooters. After that, it's a thousand scooters. I could like honestly, I'm just waiting for more scooters to arrive. And it, it they they wrote me, they said, uh, we we can give you a 25 percent off another scooter. <laughs> it's like the same deal I had to begin with. Not not going to get a third scooter, but it was a uh, man that was a weird weird hassle. And it turns out, you know what? Legally, you don't have to send anything back. You know this? Yeah. FTC.gov, look it up. Yeah. Bold print. If a company sends you merchandise that you did not request, you can keep it as a gift. It's yours. Yeah. 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 I mean, they, they, can, they can complain. They can yell at you. They can try to take you to small claims court. Nothing's going to happen. No. Yeah. And, and I bet they, they probably would have fought this one. But you know what? I'm a good guy. Yeah. I'm a good guy. And I thought... Man, I would have given you 50, 60 bucks for that scooter. Go, if I'd th known that's you had more action. than I got. And yeah. man, I just, I felt like... May, if, if people were telling me, you know, you got to think about the karma here. Yeah. Because you don't want to keep these scooters. Yeah, these are these scooters are drenched in blood. That'll that just ruin you for yeah. life, well, karmically. I, I, feel like, I feel like consumerism and karma maybe don't overlap as much as people might think. And then I say to myself and to them, maybe this is karma. Yeah, maybe, maybe these people are evil. No, maybe maybe I've been good and this is karma paying me back. And I'm spitting and you in just threw face. it away. I spat in yeah. karma's face. Off they go. What if, what, hey, let's go another step. What if this company is evil and you taking extra scooters to help put them out of business <laughs> would have, you know, nobody wants, we got to stand up to big scooter, man. Big scooter. I, yeah. don't, I don't think they're, I don't, I, I don't think they're evil. I it, got hosed by a scooter company once. Hosed? Hosed. That's a Canadian term. Hosed. What, uh, how did you get hosed? Well, uh, the, a developer at their company used my email address, which is a fairly common mashup of my first name Man, and last name. You need a new email address. I, look, I, what seemed like a great idea in 2003 is not a good idea in the future. Um, they used my email address as the test for the notification system that tells them where every scooter that is dying has ba a dying battery is. So for a four-day period... Every single scooter from this giant company that had a dying battery sent me an email That's, about what? every five minutes, and I got. Hold on, I can tell you. Do you have you. the same first name as the CEO by any chance? No, that would that would have been that would have made more sense. Um, I might have deleted them all, but it was something like twenty two thousand emails. Holy cannoli! In four days, and I complained about it on Twitter, and they fixed it within like twenty minutes of arriving on Monday morning. But yeah, um, that's a lot. Of and I got a lot of free scooter credit because I was like, I'm just going to go pick up all these scooters that are within <laughs> 10 miles of me and throw them in the fucking ocean if you don't stop this. Yeah. And then the CTO sent me a note and apologized. I was like, I'm so sorry. Did they explain why they used your email? Because they're idiots. But why did they use your email? Because, it, because were, you, were you a customer? Look, man, no, they use they <laughs> if you're 
When you're like, hey, I want to sign up for car insurance, but <laughs> oh, I don't want to be man. bothered by the follow-up emails, you put I'm I'm Jack at jackblack.com yeah. into your into your Yeah. Yeah. And that's what it happened. Yeah. So, so y- you just gave yeah. Man. I just gave Jack Black some spam. I'm sorry, <clears throat> that's Jack. Horrible. Black. It was bad. It was bad. You know, yours is worse. You should have kept those scooters, <sighs> man. You could have had one scooter for each foot for each kid. <laughs> I'm so they could glad. have been double double tagged the scooters. I am so glad to be done with those scooters. Just wait. There's going to be more when you get home today. Oh, my God. I wouldn't, wouldn't doubt it. Top story this week. Hi, Norm. It seems like he's here with us. I can hear his voice. We may actually, we may... FaceTime him. What? Now, I'm not guaranteeing anything. You can't FaceTime. That's hooked up to... Oh, no. No, no, no. We've done it. On location. What? We have chatted with, with, with Norm at Disney World. What time is it in New Zealand right now? I think it's three hours earlier. Or tomorrow? To New Zealand. It's 6.22 a.m. Yeah, yeah. But tomorrow. Tom- yeah, he's in the future. Yeah. Uh, I want to get the lottery numbers. So um, we, may, we may try that. See if, if we can get a video call to New Zealand Madness. working via satellite. We'll see. Uh, Mad. Wouldn't it be like fiber optic cable under the internet now, under the water? It's that sounds much lower tech to me. Really? If it goes to outer space, Do you know and back, how hard it is to run fibers under the ocean. It's yeah, really hard. Not to mention, like, fix them. Yeah. What happens if a shark eats it? Yeah, they have to fix them. Yeah, there's so, 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 so. Well, God, now, now, I, your moment of I science. forgot we might FaceTime Norm. All right, we'll, we'll see if that happens. You mean text Norm and let him know we might FaceTime him? Yeah, do that. Yeah, text him. Yeah, hey. So, so Will Smith and I. Hello. Both enjoy the virtual reality. And so I, I'm sure, I'm, and in fact, you're one of the few people on the planet who has played this game. I've already enjoyed this virtual reality. We were thrilled to find that Half-Life Alex has a release date. Now, this is going to be available to you, the buying public, in a mere uh, 33 days. March 23rd, 2020 is the date that Half-Life Alex will release. God, I got to wait that long? On Steam. It's, That's like a month and four days. It's going to fly by. It's going to be oh. a, a blip in time. Every day is like an eternity in 2020. I mean, the thing is, like, this is... I, there's, there's like six debates between now and then. Yeah, but we have our primary long before this comes out. I know. Uh, this I don't think there's a game I'm looking forward to more in virtual reality. I don't think that that's a, you know, an uncommon thing to I say, say this year. I that's a stretch, yeah. Uh, but this is, I don't know if there's a game I have looked forward to more than this either. And I've looked forward to a lot of virtual reality games. This is, this is an exciting thing, and I'm glad that it's coming on the 23rd. I know you can't say much about your experience playing it. No, we can talk about it. Um, with... Uh, <laughs> We can talk about it as much as you that's, want. That's weird because that is not Norm's. Oh, really? Norm's line. No, he's very specific about oh. like you can talk oh, about. We can't do story beats and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so, um, having played it, do you think you are more excited for this game to see what else there is to it that you haven't seen yet, or do you feel like you have experienced that initial shock and and, and joy of playing it, and so you're a little less excited than the regular public? No, I'm. Ex- I've been excited to come back and play more since we left. Yeah. Um. I mean, look. They, so they they didn't do, and I think Norman and I talked about this after after we went. But like, it's not. It is not a mechanical revolution, right? They didn't figure out some magical new things in VR that we've never seen before. Yeah. But it's really well done. The art is incredible. Like, there's the volume of art is right up there with like the best looking of the Insomniac games. That we've that we've seen so far, right? And you know, by storm, art, storm you, winds. You mean set like set design, textures, geometry, the whole bit. The, the and, and also the like the number of objects you can interact with. Mm. So if you like, you think about if you think about like, I don't know, uh, think about like that secret that secret shop that Valve released with the lab, right? Where you can go into the secret shop from Dota, and yeah. like it feels like you should be able to touch everything there, and you can only touch like ten things. Mm-hmm. There are literally thousands of things on each level that you can that you can interact with and grab and and use your hands on and and like and that that alone is such a big change versus even something like Stormwind or like one of one of the one of the, the Asura's Asura's uh, As, Asgard's Wrath right that came out last year like like those games look great but a lot of the stuff isn't interactive and you're kind of like you can't open all you can't go in and start opening drawers willy nilly yeah. and you know, you can only open the ones that highlight and stuff like that. And, and, and that is a, it seems like a small thing, but it's, it's a big change. I think for it's VR like games. Duke Nukem for the modern age, Duke Nukem, when it came out, it was hailed for many things. It, you could it, pee. 
yeah, you could do many things, and uh, but interactivity seemed to be at the front. Like they yeah. wanted everything to be usable, and uh, it, it's uh, sounds like that that this is the VR version of that. Very much so, and like there's a lot of places it rewards it rewards exploration. It's still a you know pretty much through line straight path kind of game. At least what we saw. Yeah, um, uh, you had head crabs uh, jump out at you. <sighs> yeah, I can't wait, man. I really I didn't. I didn't think Half Life was scary. Before. Oh, you mean the what about that the one level with the the, the zombie level? I didn't. I I thought Raven Home was fun because I enjoyed Home. like playing physics. I like I liked setting up physics nightmares for the zombies to get slaughtered in. Yeah, the black head crabs, the venom ones, yeah. terrifying. Right in VR. Okay, it's a it's a much scarier game in VR. Not like in a you know not unsettling, not creepy, not like yeah. your body horror saw stuff, but it's it's a it's a lot. It's fun. I can't wait to play more. Cannot wait. I am so glad that they have locked down this date and that Valve has learned how to compensate for Valve time, which means not even announcing a game until it's pretty much done. Well, yeah, I mean, I was like what when Norm and I played in December, at least the parts that we've played like looked art complete. There were definitely yeah. places where they had performance optimization to do that they were like look you're coming into a place where the frames are going to be bad because we haven't done the performance mm -hmm. optimization yet um but it's it's I, i'm excited to play more and we i think we played mostly on like 1080s so it's not i mean really good, good cards but not the top of the line by any rtx way. was not on there's i don't think there's rtx in, there's not that's why it wasn't on yeah i don't think i don't think i would think that the performance are at least my experience with control and some of the other games that support rtx makes me think that maybe RTX is not compatible with locked 90 hertz times right. two. <laughs> um, Are you playing on Index? Uh, no, I don't have an Index. I have a Vibe Pro. Well, you're not going to get an Index anytime soon, unfortunately. Yeah. Well, I have Index controllers, so I'm good. That's good. I mean, that's halfway there. Yeah. That's that's good. Uh, the Index has you know excellent sound. Yeah. I got it. And that's something yeah. that... I like that a lot. People would take for granted. It's got uh, the, a slightly wider field of view, or at least the sensation of that. Um, but they are, they are out of stock everywhere, everywhere, except there's like every country has them out oh. of stock. The full kits that just the headset, just the controllers, you can't buy anything except just the headset or itself, I believe in Japan. Huh. It's the only place that had them in stock as of like earlier this week. Well, I guess I'm going to go to Japan. Uh, I don't, it's, I don't think you're going to do that. I think you're probably gonna play on your Vive Pro. Yeah. I'm, so I have the Vive Pro with the wireless kit. And it's mm -hmm. really hard for me to go back to a wire after having the wireless kit. Yeah, yeah, true. Like, I like being that feeling of freedom, that untetheredness. Yeah, I wonder how many people are going to play uh, wirelessly on Quest, you know, using... Oh, because you could virtual desktop or whatever? Yeah. I think that would probably be an... As, like, so I played for, for an hour and a half, I think, when we were there on the Quest. And it was one of the less comfortable headsets just because it's so front heavy. Yeah. And there's a lot of looking down. So you're doing a lot of like like neck muscles that don't normally get exercised yeah. or exercised. And I was I was pretty stiff the next day. You were playing with Link or with uh, over virtual desktop? Uh, that was with Link. Okay. And it was before the official Link cable was out. So the it was with the heavier right. Anker cable. Yeah. Which added more front weight. <laughs> it's so it funny great. seeing all of the, like daily, there's a post in our um, Oculus, Oculus Quest of somebody who's modded their, their Quest and said, I finally made it comfortable. Yeah. You know, yeah. It, it looks like something out of Blade Runner. It's like it's got a battery pack back there, a new strap, a new faceplate. The battery pack is a key counterweight. Yeah. yeah and, and I've done all that. Like I know, I know what they're talking about. It's just funny that like there's this product that needs help. Like that much in order to feel comfortable. Well, I mean, because, the first Vive was like that too. The first, the, the yeah. first stretchy headband Vive was not comfortable, and didn't that that thing didn't even have sound. Like you had to plug in headphones to yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. True. I mean, look, I think the the like the engineering of the the Quest is amazing. I love the just to be clear. I think the Quest is incredible, and I really love the Quest despite my feelings about Facebook as a whole. Me too, and and honestly, for me, it's more about the convenience factor, right? Right. It's an amazing product. I, I wish that, I hope if they do another version, which I'm sure they will, because it seems like it's done pretty well. Yeah. I hope they'll pay a little more attention to the ergonomics, even if it's just like dangling dead weight on the back of that strap mm -hmm. so that you're not like, so that there's something to counteract all the hardware on the front. I did that. A lot of people use a battery pack because it's more practical. It serves a, a purpose, mm -hmm. but I'm not spending two hours in uh, on the quest usually. So I don't need that extra juice. Yeah. I just bought a weight. I bought a, I, I, there's a, somebody who made a Kickstarter for a specific, you know, for a quest mm -hmm. a strappable counterweight. And he said how much it weighed. And I just found a weight that weighs that much. And I strapped it to the back and it actually, it does offset 
the weight in the front and it does a good job, but it also makes the thing just a lot heavier yeah. to lift up. It just feels substantially like twice as heavy. And then it's not so bad when you put it on, but you definitely have more momentum when you spin your head. So it's not a perfect solution. I've, I've heard, and you know, as every, everyone else says who follows this stuff, that the next quest will be lighter and you know faster, and it will be better in every respect. Well, so curious to see what that looks like, but I don't expect to see it this year. But at the same time, like the things that they've done to make those headsets light, like make the outside cloth, means that they're really hard to maintain in the long term. Like our first gen Oculus Rifts that we've been using for dev every day for, for years now, three years now. The OC one? The OC, well, we have the pre-release ones, but yeah, we're like, they're, some of them are really gross. Like the ones that you handle all the time. Yeah. The cloth gets gross. There's no way really to clean it. Mm. So it, it's kind of icky. Um, I, I would love to see something where the electronics and the battery are decoupled from the screen in the next gen quest and they dangle that stuff off the back to kind of give you a counterweight. So it's all part of the strap rather than part of the headset. You want the the CPU in the in the strap? Is that what you're saying? Oh, yeah, I want I want the stuff this like look, there's stuff that you have to have in the front that weighs stuff because like you need the screens where yeah. the eyeballs are. Well that's how the prototypes were. Yeah. But there's no reason you can't have that have that stuff on the on the back of the strap right. instead. But they they had them like that. Why did they not probably it's expensive to manufacture and there's probably some weird connector. I think you're probably right. I think yeah. making things as tight as possible. You know, yeah. it's probably, and it just meant the strap could be fabric. I mean, look, the Quest is perfect for Beat Saber and Pistol Whip, which is like 90% of what I play with it these the, days. The so. Quest is a success. Yeah. And, and I'm like, Facebook can't make enough of them. Uh, it's selling well enough. I don't think any, it's like, I don't think that they have made a huge mistake there. I think it's just interesting that there's people modifying them to such a degree, despite, yeah. you know, and it, or that it's successful despite people doing that. Yeah. Or it's, people needing to do that. Yeah. Right, exactly. Well, that was a bit of a tangent off of Half-Life Alex, but it's coming. By the time by the time it's our next podcast, it will be within a month and that's going to be good. Are there are there any other games that you're really looking forward to this year? I don't know that there's I've seen a lot of VR announcements for yeah, this year. The, Usually that stuff comes at GDC and E3. Medal of Honor is the big one oh, from right. Oculus. From, from that's a that's the Respawn is yeah. doing that? Yeah. Yeah, um, I'll play a Respawn VR yeah, game. That'll that be sounds fun. great. Yeah, that's the other real Big one. Uh, there, there's a. Uh, Is that the last of the kind of Oculus Studios announced stuff? Rift games. I think they're f focused on Quest. I'm I'm a totally imagining this, but I think that they, if I were them, I'd yeah, be I'd Quest, just be Quest like from here on out. Yeah, and let, it would be cross platform, of course, but it would be Quest yeah. first. Let Valve and HTC have the high end PC market, and which doesn't seem to exist outside of stuff Oculus based. Sure, but for. now they have Link, so just like uh, even Quest can join the fun. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Jeremy, what's happening in pop culture today? What does that mean? What does that mean? We'll wave off. He says he's not very good for that this morning. Oh, he okay, he's not down. We're not going to be... We're not going to talk to Norm. We're not going to talk to I just want to get Norm. that out of the way up front. Thank so you. that the people that are hanging, suffering through my presence, waiting for a moment with Norm, <laughs> don't continue to pain themselves further. Oh, uh, I could have said the same thing. I, I know. I'm so sorry. I'm, I'm so sorry. You have to be here. I could pull up a YouTube video and just put him back there. Just on loop. Just moot, Silent. Mute. That'd be... Do you think... Yeah. That might be creepy. All right. I like it. it. Uh, Stranger Things. Stranger Things has come back for season four. Now, you're not going to be able to watch this because you're going to cancel your Netflix account. But... So I, I will, somebody will just take care of it for me, I'm sure. <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's a really hot series. I want to know, are you up to date? Have you seen Stranger Things uh, series uh, season one, two, and three? So I saw all of season one. Loved season one. Me too, bro. I watched like the first two episodes of season two. It's like, eh. I'm probably good. I think they didn't make it. The thing that I liked is not what they're making here. So I stopped watching it. Everybody felt that way. Yeah. And then the, the, so they fixed it. They went, went back. Season three, even better than season one. It's amazing. Got to come back and watch it. Did you watch it? No. Okay. I started it and, yeah. uh, and for no reason, I just stopped. Like I had something going on in life and I didn't go back to it. I don't watch TV. Like I watch. Yeah. I play my, spend my time playing video games and dadding. I, I, I watch Picard. This is all I watch these days. It's just I, I try to watch Picard once a week. But Can we talk about that? Um, yeah, yeah. We, we talk about it every week. We do a spoiler at the end, of the, end of the show. We, uh, however, because the, the, the boys aren't here, yeah. I don't want to do episode oh. four yet. Okay. But let's talk about the first no, few no, episodes. No, that's fine. I don't yeah. want to double dip. <laughs> so see, at the uh, end, I, can I spoil the end of season three of, of Stranger Things? 
is it too early? Are all the boys aliens? Are they all from the down under? Because it's like the it, beneath. It's spoiled to me. Like I got it spoiled. Did Pam ever come back? Apparently, yeah. Like I, I don't know. I, feel, I have a, I have mixed feelings about saying this because I didn't know it, and then the season four teaser came out, and everyone's talking about it. So it's my fault. I didn't watch season three. If you didn't watch the end of season three, it's your fault. I think you'll still watch it if you know this. But Hopper apparently. Uh, he's, he's the cop, right? Yeah. He mysteriously... Spoilers, by the way. He mysteriously, uh, you know, I will say vanishes. Um, and there's a, there's a, you think at the end of season three, maybe he's dead. You have good reason to you think can't, that. Wait, you, you can't kill Winona Ryder's TV husband. Right. She's right. had enough sadness in yeah, her life. But She's suffered. One reason why I don't feel too bad spoiling this is yeah. because even if you did see that, Apparently, there's a mid end credits, like uh, one of these Marvel type things where they show you a little a stinger a, is that on what, TV. A stinger. They did a stinger. Yeah. We're mid credits. Gross. Like the credits start to roll and there's no music. Netflix needs to be stopped. <laughs> this is out of control. This is they, they're, they're They've they've thrown out the forms. They're not respecting the medium. Oh, you are an angry man. You are very angry. I'm going to get a new T-shirt made that says F Netflix. <laughs> You don't have to have that made. That's on Amazon. So you you watch, you see the the horrible demise of of Sergeant uh, Hopper, right? And then mid the credits start to roll. There's no music. Yeah, snow starts to fall, and then you see a scene, a new scene you haven't seen before. It's in Russia. There's guards speaking in Russian, and it's subtitled. And they say, "No, not the American. He's behind one of the doors." And what and the American is what the Russians call Hopper throughout season three. Wait, there are Russians? Yeah. Is this a cabin in the woods thing where it, there's like people pulling the strings for the people? It's the eighties, dude. The eighties were all about the Russians and the bad guys. Okay, so you, you gotta get you gotta get on board. It's like you gotta go back in but time. But when we're against monsters, the Russians we're all in the, we, we're on <laughs> Team Human here, man. I know. I know. The giant plant nightmare monster. Oh, that's so sweet. That is that is exactly right. And I I love you, brother. Yeah. That, that is the right attitude. But. No, that is not the sort. That is not Stranger oh. Things season three. Like very early, like the, um, uh, Dustin taps into like with shortwave radio. He ca- he hears the Russians like you know doing something wrong. Seven thirty six with the uh, with fourteen the, with the upside down ninety two. And uh, yeah, so anyway, the teaser that's been re- released for season four. Yeah, everyone's on board now. There's gonna be season four. Features Hopper, so he's alive. So it's a flashback. No, he's alive in Russia. In some sort of work camp. Wow. Yeah. Soviet Russia. Hopper. Yes. Something. Somethings. Yes. And so yeah. that's that's the thing. And so that's this is a big deal. This is a big deal. For people who love uh, Stranger Things. Huh. Yeah. I really enjoyed the first season of Stranger Things <laughs> yeah, a lot. You mentioned that. Yeah. Have I enticed pretty... you? Are you going to go back and watch season three? Well, I mean, now that you told me what happens, I'm probably okay. That's just the ending. You got to get there. It's about the journey. Look, I have a lot of journeys. Uh, you know, what? I'll do a real quick uh, tangent here about Stranger Things pinball that's the newest pinball release from stern pinballs stranger okay. things okay this is a big deal because it was designed by brian eddie who designed none other what? than attack from mars wow that's a good table and medieval madness that's an amazing table which are two of the most highly valued tables that you can possibly find in yeah, the god tier pinball it is god tier pinball design so yeah. they, they brought him out of retirement he hadn't, wow. he hadn't done a pinball machine since Medieval Madness. Please tell me the table flips over. 1997 or whatever. Like you're playing and then just whammo, <laughs> it spins and you're like upside down, your ball's there? Yeah. No, this is Stern we're talking about, okay? They don't spend money. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so it doesn't do that, but oh. it does have a special feature. What's I don't know if you're, if you're aware of this, but if you buy pinball machines nowadays, you can buy the pro tier, yeah. which is the basic pinball machine. But if you want all the bells and whistles, you have to buy the premium or limited edition Pinball machine. So you like that Wizard of Oz machine you had? No, well that's a bit different. That's oh. Jersey Jack. He put he like put all the bells and whistles in the base machine, but priced it the same as like more than premium. Okay, that, that's different thing. You're, you've gone off off topic. We're sticking with Stern. Okay, look, now, I can't control myself. So, now, now the Stranger Things twist. If you get if you get the premium, if you get the LE, it costs almost two thousand dollars more. That's a lot. Seventeen. That's a lot of cheddar. Hundred dollars more. You get something they've never done before. Admirable. One of the children from the show delivers it to you. <laughs> they put a projector, a Pico projector, underneath the apron where the balls go when you drain. Okay. And it shoots out over the play field. And then they put reflective material 
<laughs> on targets yeah. and ramps. And part of the game is this big screen that, that sits in the center of the screen. It looks like a, a drive-in theater. And that screen will fold down, becomes a ramp to shoot a ball up into a Demogorgon's mouth. All right. So that's all. Like the, That mechanic is in the pro. But the projector and the reflective material, not in the premium. That's pretty cool. LA. The problem is that the reflective material is like masking tape. Like it doesn't reflect very well. They did not splurge. Uh, they did not spend the money on the good reflective they didn't think material. Tilt five reflective stuff. What? The yeah, reflective yeah, yeah, stuff yeah, yeah, yeah. like the like Jerry exactly. Altrick uses. The, the yeah. retro reflective yeah, stuff. Yeah, that stuff's amazing. That's what you want. You want or like any type of screen material. So you're gonna have to buy this seventeen hundred dollar extra pinball machine and then scrape the the shitty reflective stuff yeah. off and put your or own on. Or just put it on top of it. Buy yourself yeah. some some better stickers. I'm sure there's gonna be a market for that. But the the news, the news of this week is that they've announced a new product for this machine. That, that works in either pro or premium, where it's it activates a feature you didn't know was in there. And that feature is UV reactive paint in the play field. So the the game will enter a mode, I presume. This is like a Tesla. This is some, te- like, here, <laughs> pay us money and we'll make, make your battery better. Exactly. Or, or like, you know, we'll unlock a software feature yeah. that you go. For. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's basically UV strips that go along the inside of your game and at, at the base. And then the game will enter mode and they will turn on and you will see a pattern in the play field that you didn't know was there that looks like the dust in the upside down. And uh, they're charging you $270 for this set of, of UV LED for stickers. <laughs> No, they're not the stickers. Oh, the stickers are already there. In, it, this, the paint's already the there. LED strips and a board to control it, and uh, and people are are not happy. This, I've never I've not seen the pinball community unhappy. This is, this about is horse sp- armor for pinball. They have not been unhappy about spending money on pinball since I've known the hobby. Like these, yeah, no, it's a they're enthusiastic about spending. They love this spending is, money. This is DLC. Yes. Nobody uh, wants DLC for hardware. It was, it's an interesting thing that no one knew that this paint job was on the game, but you'd see it if you shine a black light on it. But there you go. Like that's, that's unfortunately, that this is the stranger thing. Why not just charge the full two grand extra for the thing and put it in there? Yeah, just put it in there. Just don't make, don't give me the, I don't want to be hassled. Very strange. It was very strange that they. It's a stranger thing, <laughs> some might say. Do you remember HQ? Yeah. Uh, we used, like, I, I think Gary. Scott Rogowski. Scott Rogowski. I'm, I think Gary Widow was the first person I was aware of it. He he was on a tear. Like, he would. He won, like, 40 bucks. He won money, and yeah. he, he would tweet about this a lot. We played, so Gina and I, I started playing, Gina started playing, Gina shared it with his wife, his wife shared it with Gary. Gary might have found about it independently, but, but like. You're staking your, your claim on this one. You were there first. I was very into this. Briefly until I won like twice and got like 32 cents each time. I was like, well, this is a complete waste of time. Wow. Yeah. Uh, I never won it, uh, but I'm not a smart man. So that, that comes as no surprise. Well, being good at trivia and being smart are independent of each other. You, in and, you and Gary and, and Norm, I suspect you guys won many times. Uh, and if I maybe that, that was enjoyable for you. I, the game apparently withered and it didn't have the following that it once had. Wait, you're saying they had the rock? And then it went away where the rock co-hosted episodes of eight. Should right. we explain what this is for people who don't remember it two years ago? Live real time trivia game with streaming video of the host telling you the questions. Forced portrait orientation. On your phone. Yeah. So you'd sign in every day at the same Six time. Six o'clock PM Pacific. And you would join the game. It would be a live broadcast. And mm-hmm. it was that live element that made it special and made it feel like you were it, you know, you were attending something. You were involved. Oh, yeah. in something. You were a contestant on a live game show. We would be having like bre- breakfast for dinner at a at a diner with Gary. Yeah, and his family, and it would be time for HQ, and and like all the adults would, without shame, pull out their phones, and also like a significant percentage of people in the audience would do it too. I mean, I mean, in the, in the restaurant, <laughs> you felt like they were your. I audience. felt like I, think, yeah. I felt like we were part of a live studio audience. <laughs> yeah, wow, that it really was a phenomenon. Yeah, we were at Big Bear. Black Bear, whatever well, that bear place is. Well, no more. HQ has closed up shop. <sighs> Apparently, they, they had a buyer lined up and in the wings, and all they had to do was write a check. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it always goes. That's how it goes. And then the buyer at the last minute said, we've changed our mind. Uh, we're not going to buy HQ. Without Rogowski. Because they sacked Rogowski a couple of years ago. Did they sack him, or did he leave for better pastures? Well, they, he tried to like do a gentle departure where he was like, I'm going to go do this podcast about baseball, which is what I really love. Right. But I'm happy to still come do your game show because I'm the one that people like. And then they were like, no, we don't need you anymore. And then... Ouch. Yeah. Yeah. So it's gone. Uh, HQ's shuttered. You know, I, I, it's... it's it, 
I will always remember them though for that for this weird moment in time where that the people really did something on their phones that they'd never done before. I think they should get credit for that. It was kind of like, uh, do you remember One Versus One Hundred on the Xbox? Do you remember playing that? I didn't play that. Oh, that was a that was a similar kind of like much smaller scale. Yeah, but like you could log in at one at six o'clock on Monday evenings every week. Oh, it play. was a specific time as well. Oh yeah, it was it was a fixed time. They had a live host. They would pull people from Xbox Live from really? the audience yeah. to be part of the 100, and then they'd promote one of those people to be the main contestant, the one. And basically, the, the way that game worked was you had to beat the panel if you were the main player, the panel of 100 players. And it was all your Xbox Live avatars. Did you ever get chosen? I was never... Dan Amrick was the one once, as I recall. He was the one? He was the one. No, I mean, did you... I was get... on the panel of 100 a couple of times. You were? That happened occasionally. Was that exciting? Mm, it was okay. Huh. But if you won there, you got Xbox points, so you could buy games. Like, like when you won the one, one versus 100, they would give you like 150 or 200 bucks worth of Xbox Live points. And the same kind of deal with trivia questions? You have to, trivia questions. And yeah. you have 10 seconds to answer? Yeah, I think, I think, I can't remember how the game worked. I think you had to be, I think you had to be more correct than the panel. Okay. So like if the pan, if the question, the panel, if the 100, if the 100 got the answer wrong and you got the answer right, then you were good. Well, I would suspect so. Yeah. But I don't remember how the mechanics were. <laughs> okay. It was a TV show too. What what I was impressed by HQ was that you there really wasn't time to cheat. Like they really they figured that out. Yeah. As they would throw the question up there and you think it's a trivia question. I have Google. Anybody in the world can play this game. Anybody can cheat at this game. But there's not time to Google the question fast enough. Oh. Even if if you, mm. if you have a panel of people like ready to help you, maybe so we went to some effort to figure out how to game this system. Yeah. Uh, one of the things you could do to help was have multiple people answering, so then you had more chances yeah. of getting wrong. But you had to hook it to your phone number. So that means you had to have multiple phone numbers, and it was a process. And you divvy up the answers so that you say, if we if nobody knows, I'll do A, you do B. Like that but like, if you have four people playing, you can only do that one time because it's a four-choice, multiple, multiple choice. I get it, but it's a strategy. Yeah, it is a strategy. So you get system. one free answer, basically. Right. Uh, the other thing you could do is have one person doing the inputting and one person doing the looking up. So as soon as he starts reading the question, you can start typing it into Google. Did you actually find there was time it to was, do that? It was, it was real tight. Yeah. Like you would just barely get the answer in time for the right. answer to come. And and often like the first Google result would be wrong. So no you know, funny. Yeah. Yeah. And, the, and they did a pretty good job writing the questions. They made mistakes sometimes. They had a couple of wrong answers in there. Errors? Yeah. Yeah. Do you, do you, it, do you know? How many people worked on that show? I like mean, 10? I'm not saying it was 100, but I was shocked to hear it was 25 people. Yeah. That's, a, well, I, I mean, I don't, I don't think it's any secret to say that like Tested has fewer than 10. Like, yeah. uh, it's like, that's an enormous staff for a streaming uh, for trivia show. I well, had no but idea. a lot of it was like the technical side of that was really hard because getting video to stay in sync across hundreds of thousands of users on mobile. Yeah. Really hard. Because it would stay in sync even if you were, like, one person was on Wi-Fi and one person was on cell. But that's not, that doesn't take a team of, like, full-time employees. That, you outsource that, don't you? Uh, that, that is a really specific thing that I don't think you can outsource. Is Given it, what I know about how video works on the internet. Really? Like, you, like, isn't that what like, Twitch does? No, because Twitch, Twitch will get wildly out of sync from client to client. Like, mm. if one person's connection is slow mm. or, like, they're on their phone, it drops, then they'll be... You know, the packets that they are behind keep adding up until they're five, 10 seconds behind. Right. And with HQ, if you're five or 10 seconds behind, that gives you a massive advantage over the person next True. to you. So, like, I don't, I think huh. it, it was a hard, the thing that they did was hard. Just, you, just the technical side of that is hard. And you think all of that tech was first party built? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Oh, that would shock me. I, if that, any, so, if anything, my guess is that they outsource, because like you can buy trivia questions for game shows that are one use from clearing houses in LA. Huh. Um, so you, you buy like the rights to, for X period of time to yeah. these 50 questions. And my guess is they use those as the base and then write their, their clever repartee for Scott and whoever after that. Well, then if that's the case, I mean, if they really owned that streaming technology, then that would be something to buy. Like you could see that as something that a, any company could put to, well, a company could put well, to use for a many number, any number of reasons. But what do you need it for? For live things like but that. It usually doesn't matter. It, usually, it doesn't matter if they're asynchronous, but yeah. if, if you're actually doing any kind of live event, which clearly there's something to it, if that was if that was popular, briefly, yeah, but maybe it was it was just the game show that was the bad idea. But people actually would like to turn it into a live something and be feel like they're a part of something. Well, the other thing is the people who owned it were kind of crappy. Like the people who started it were bad, and then one of the founders died. There was a lot of there yeah. was a lot of stuff that happened. Drug there. overdose. Yeah. 
Um, so we'll see you at HQ. Uh, I'll always remember you. The last episode is on YouTube. The two hosts that were still there at the end oh, really? had giant bottles of champagne. It's very funny. It's sad. It's funny. They, they had feels. Was Scott there? Scott was not. They didn't invite Scott back. The, you, know, you ever watch The Toys That Made Us? Yeah, I love that. It's on Netflix. I liked the, Yeah, I know. I watched the movies that made us before my problems with F Netflix. Hashtag I have F not Netflix. yet watched the movies that made us. I watched the I watched Die Hard and I watched Ghostbusters. Yeah, they're all good. Both good. Um, I would like to say that uh, I I have a conversation with people from time to time. What would you like to see them cover in the toys that made us? Right, like if they've done the Transformers. Which for me was the big one. Transformers and Kenner Star Wars were the two big ones for me. Kenner Star Wars was their probably I would imagine it's their most popular one. Mask maybe. Oh really? You remember Mask? Yeah. <laughs> I, I but like I learned about it after the fact. I oh. I did not know about Mask. Oh man, I played with Mask. Mask and Transformers were like essentially the same thing. For Lego me. was a huge was one of their best episodes. It's a really good episode. System the system. Yeah. My Little Pony surprisingly interesting. Hmm. Uh, no, it was. I didn't it, watch that one. Uh. And I, but when I ask people what should they cover, uh, for whatever reason, I've never heard Magic the Gathering. And yet, it is a brilliant thing to cover. And in fact, they think it's such a good idea, they're doing an entire documentary on it. I was just thinking, what I needed was like a 12-part, 16-hour Magic the Gathering, <laughs> How It Works documentary. I don't think this is going to be your Ken Burns style, you know, PBS 12-part. I want some still images yeah. that we zoom in and out of slowly. Yeah. And I want a soothing voice talking about the, the cards. No, I, I, this is smart. I never played Magic the Gathering, which is maybe why it never occurred to me. But my son was uh, addicted to it. In, really? in a way that was actually negative. So I, I hope that they do cover like some of that because I, I think yeah. there are people out there with magic problems. I, I want I want somebody sitting like in a trailer talking about how they wish that their kid had gotten into crack instead of Magic the Gathering. Ah, uh, you see, now that's good perspective yeah. because I would rather he be in a Magic than crack. See, that's good. I appreciate that. Yeah. This is good therapy. Have you ever played Magic the Gathering? No. Really? No. Oh, wow. What, 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 I, look... There's a level of math and memory, keeping things in your, like, I don't have the short-term memory to play huh. Magic the Gathering. Really? I think the normal cohorts I have here both played Magic the Gathering. Norm, I'm pretty uh, sure yeah, did. I don't definitely know Norm did. I'm not sure about Kishore either. Yeah. But but given that they have so much in common with, with the comic book stuff, I just feel like it's possible. You just think they're the right kind of nerds. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't have any problem with people who play Magic. You, I got no beef. Well, your daughter hasn't been addicted to it yet. Well, so just wait, and you're going to wish, maybe. Well, like, I, so I like a lot of the games that spawned off of Magic. So, like, Hearthstone. I played some Hearthstone. Well, which yeah. is it's so Which is basically, like, simple, yeah, like, as a, maybe, I, I don't want to say simplified because I don't understand how Magic works well enough to say. But it's a video game. But I feel like it's a more simple version of, of the kind of core mechanics well, of certainly Magic. certainly when it launched, perhaps it was. Yeah. But it, they've been expanding it ever since mm -hmm. then. Um, I played a Star Trek card game that was, as they all are, based on Magic. It's the most popular non-traditional deck card game that there is. Well, I love Dominion, which, which like, spawned out of the idea of collectible... Like, I don't like collectible card games. You see, you say you're, the, you're not that kind of nerd, but you oh, play... Oh, no, I'm that kind of nerd. You play board games yeah. like nobody I know. We played Azul last night. That game is incredible. All right. Um, Tell me about Dominion. So Dominion is a deck building game. Not you know, there's no like Matt. There's no tapping. There's no lanes or anything like that. Like given Magic, um, but it was the idea is you buy the box for forty bucks and you get all the cards that you need. Yeah, and then everybody plays off the same potential set of cards versus Magic, where you have to go buy blind boxes and get the hoping to get the cards that you want and need right. in order to continue. That's the gambling building your aspect. Deck. That's that's the part I don't like about loot magic. boxes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Netrunner, Android Netrunner is the Magic-esque game that is not a collectible card game. You just buy the boxes and you get exactly what you need. Okay. Yeah. But they don't make that anymore, of course. Uh, this just in. Uh, Norman Chan says, maybe in 30? Huh. So ping me 30 minutes from now and uh, we, will, we will see what we can do. Uh, okay. Okay. Oh, wait. Oh, wait, he says he could do now. He said now or in 30. Let's do 30. So we'll do it in 30. That's going to be interesting. Can you let me know when it's been 30 minutes? Can somebody do that? Can send anything set a timer? Set a timer for 30 minutes, please, Brilliant. Siri. Okay. 30 minutes and counting. You have a male Siri. I do, do Siri. British Siri. No, no, just male. Oh, that's male. I do British female. 
Wow. Yeah. That's, that explain, that, that tells us a lot about what you're into, Jeremy. Well, it, what it tells you is, what it doesn't tell you, what the truth is, is I just couldn't listen to American Siri anymore. I mm-hmm. couldn't do it. It gave me PTSD, honestly, because of the early days when she just didn't get it. She's, it's still terrible. <laughs> it's still really bad. It is so much better than it used to be. Low bar. And so I, I every time I heard her voice, well, even if she understood me, I was like, we don't, I don't like you. I do not like you because you just, we don't speak the same language. And so I had to change it. And it's a brilliant solution yeah. because it feels like a different person entirely. Yeah. The only problem is British Siri sometimes thinks I live in San Francesco. <laughs> That's pretty amazing. That's not norm. I um I switched to male Siri because I thought it was weird that I was always asking female Siri to do shit for me. I thought it set a bad example for my daughter. <laughs> That's that is really subliminal. That's very subtle. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, that's smart. I think it's weird that all the assistants are female. Why haven't they taken a celebrity and, and digitized that voice? Waze does that. Shrek gives me turn directions all the time. Are they samples? Oi, donkey, turn left in 300 meters. Are you serious? Yeah. Are they samples or are they done properly? Depends on which ones they did. So, like, there's there are always celebrity or character voice packs for ways. Like, when Star Wars Last Jedi came out, they had, I think, C-3PO and R2-D2. They've got to be samples. I Well, like, R2-D2 would be samples. But but C-3PO, I'm sure they got Anthony Daniels because it has, like, turn left in 300 meters. But you, you know how this stuff is done. They take a, a voice artist. They have them say every possible phoneme in, the, in, in a language. Yeah. They come up with sentences that contain those phonemes that sound like nonsense. Yeah. They record them all in, and then they do machine learning to, in order to break apart all those sentences and turn those sounds into samples that they can incorporate into brand new phrases, and that me- allows them to say anything. Dude, in, in ways now, you can you record your own voice to give voice directions to guide you yeah, on the road. This is not what I'm talking about. Here, here's Cookie Monster. Let's hear what this sounds like. I can do Cookie Monster. C is for cookie. It's good enough for me. <laughs> you nailed it. Okay, it won't let me do a preview. Samples is not what I'm talking about. That's the Alexa stuff where you can get Samuel L. Jackson to tell you what the weather is. They brought him into the studio and they had him say, "Yeah, the weather tomorrow is going to be well, sunny." The way thing they paid the voice actor to record a bazillion lines. I don't want that. I want the the cool raw phoneme stuff. I want because those oh. the voices that they actually like the actual Siri voice sounds like that that voice artist that they modeled it off of. Now, why don't they take somebody who's I want, the guy who does the voice of Jarvis? You know, oh, yeah. or the guy who did the voice of Hal. I want to hear actual computer voices from movie history turn at, like coming out of my thing. And I wanted to be able to say anything like that would be amazing. And they could certainly sell it. Uh, that that would be nice. So that- I have some friends who do that. They can learn. They do. A, they have a company that you can do. Um, uh, let's see. I, I can't find the demo, but basically they you can work. Talk for like six minutes, read a couple of scripts that they have that are like yeah. anywhere from like five hours long to like 10 minutes long. And it will generate a computer voice that sounds exactly like that person. Are you serious? Yeah. That is a technology that exists Yeah, today. but to anybody, anybody can do that? Uh, no. I mean, you have to pay them. But ah, yes. But, oh, okay. How much do they charge for them, something like that? I'm, is it astronomical or is it $20? I mean, it's a business thing. It's a, it's a business thing. So it's astronomical. It's, I, it's I mean, I don't know about astronomical, astronomical, but that's like... Int- that's great. I didn't know that that was even available to people like you and me. Yeah. So, like, here you go. Here's... I don't know if this is good radio. Yeah, no, this are is you, bad are you gonna, radio. Are you going to play something? If you could play a, if you could play a voice that's done by a celebrity. Uh, I don't know if they have any celebrity voices, but let's see if this works. This, yeah. This is bad radio. Welcome to Spokestack. What would you like to say? That okay. one sounds bad. That was off of 16 minutes. You know, if you yeah, let's s- not do this. If now. you could send me the link, I could oh, actually play right. it for our friends in the audience. <laughs> that would be much better. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm going to just post it in our chat in our chat notes. Now, speaking of voices, celebrity voices. Yeah. And that's the best segue I got for you. This Can show. I get, well, look, this, the segue guy's not here. Um, wow, this is a Netflix program. Fuck Netflix. Did, did you know that they're going to make a Masters of the of the Universe show? I have no affinity for Masters of the Universe. I don't either. Yeah. I did not. I didn't own a single He Man figure. Um, I although I will say I was aware of it. What? <laughs> What are you doing? My wife, my daughter is losing a front tooth today. And she just sent oh, me right this on. picture. Yeah, sure. Yeah, it's like a meme picture. You want me to put it on the big screen? No, please don't. Uh, 
I was aware of Masters of the Universe. I liked the idea of He-Man. Um, also an excellent episode of The Toys That Made Us. It seemed too close to wrestling for me, and I didn't like wrestling. I didn't like wrestling either. Yeah. But, you know, the whole thing with I Have the Power. You met, yeah, you, by you, the power of Grayskull. Did you see that episode of The Toys no, That Made Us? I didn't that's, care about that's, it. He-Man. Right. You should watch them anyway. The ones that you don't think you care about are the most interesting. Well, I, I probably don't have Netflix anymore. So. <laughs> <laughs> the, the whole thing, like, if, if you don't, if you never watched He Man and the Masters of the, of the Universe, uh, He Man before he's He Man because he's got two forms. His name's just Steve. Yeah, he's a regular guy. Yeah, and then he a huge he, muscle man. When he needs muscles, he brings his sword. He holds it to the sky and he says, "By the power of Grayskull, I have the power." Yes. Yeah. And then he was he, pretty muscly, and even then when he he's be- not muscle guy. And then he becomes a wrestler. Yeah. With that, a loincloth. That phrase, yeah. "I have the power." Yeah. Was a was developed by the marketing department. Of course, it was. Now this you always hear products designed by marketing departments. Oh. They're the worst. But yeah. this is where it came into play because they what they did was they saw they wanted to make a toy they wanted to make a doll that boys would play with. Yeah. And so they looked far and wide. They couldn't find any good examples of it, and they looked for what boys want. The power. It and, turns and, out. and not just boys, but kids. And it turns huh. out they have no power. And what they want oh. in life is power. And so that phrase was something that really resonated with children, particularly boys, who wanted control agency. over agency over their lives. They couldn't just say, I want agency, though. That would be <laughs> kind of boring. Agency. Give me agency! <laughs> so that's, uh, just as a side note, I thought that was fascinating. It is fascinating. Thank you, The Toys That Made Us. Um, they're making a new series. No thanks, Netflix. A new animated Masters of, of the Universe series. Yeah, okay. And th- for this, you know what, Will Smith? Yeah, hello. I will. Are you going to, is there going to be AV cues? I will put this on the big screen. So if you're watching oh, the video. Ad. Don't, don't zoom, look at the ad. We'll zoom in here. And, uh, Whoa. If, now. Crotchety I, Luke Skywalker. I want you to think about voice acting for a minute and, and ask yourself if you're making Masters of the Universe, what kind of budget do you have? Where are you going to spend the money? You know, maybe it's maybe, on Netflix. Maybe you'll get. I know all the money they're not spending on good customer service. <laughs> they can dump into Mark Hamill. So, like, they have. This is a true spared no expense voice cast. Are you hey, ready? You're welcome to my sixty bucks, Hamill. So Mark Hamill, none other than yeah. Mark Hamill, Luke fucking Skywalker, voicing the best character in the entire universe. The dog. Of the, the the like the horse dog that He Man rides. He said it was like a. Clear tiger. I don't know what you're talking about. It's a. It's like a. It's, it's like cringer. a. It looks like a dog. Um. What's his name? Captain Skeletor. Oh, yes. It is Captain Skeletor. <laughs> Voicing Captain Skeletor. Ah, I'll get you, He Man. If it's the last thing I do. Right. That's yes, straight that's from, totally the, from the wizard of of, of, of He Man. Yeah. This is. Uh. You can almost hear it. Like he's the perfect voice guy. For he has this. a good laugh. Yeah. Because you've heard him do the Joker. Yeah. This. Season. No. No. I mean Skeletor has a good laugh too. Right. Exactly. Do, do we have a sample? No, no samples. Whoa, it's Buffy just is playing She-Ra? We got Buffy. Do Didn't it. they already do a She-Ra? You, that is not She-Ra, that's Tila. Oh, that's Tila. She-Ra was, she was, was the spinoff. He- He-Man's sister. Yeah. That's right. Um, I don't know who that is. Uh, that's the ghost boy. Alicia Silverstone, back from Clueless. You remember yeah, her? Yeah, I remember Alicia Silverstone. She was Batgirl for a little while. She's doing uh, Queen Mariana. Yeah, I don't know any. Totally of these got characters. that one. I don't know these. You got the guy, oh, the bee guy, the guy, who, he Mr. Did Bees, Candyman. You remember this movie, Candyman? Nope, never saw that one. That also was really fucking disturbing. From Star Trek: The Next Generation, he's doing Scare Glow. Uh, these oh. aren't real characters, are they? Yeah, they are. Is Scare Glow a cro- crossover with the Gorgeous Ladies of Wrestling? Because that would make a lot of sense. Um, look at that. She has a cool hat. You've got um, the the Queen from Game of Thrones. Oh yeah, uh, Queen Queen Circe. Sc- Scarcy, yeah, yeah. She's doing uh, a sneer lady, Evil Lynn. Oh yeah. Okay. Uh, I don't. I don't know. Buck is. Rogers uh, is playing Steve. Steve. Also, oh yeah, the Hat Man. He's he's the major domo. <laughs> also from Game of Thrones. Yeah, he's a good guy. In his Game name's of Buck Lannister, I think. Uh, Liam Cunningham is his name. Oh okay. And he's doing Man at Arms. He Man at Arms is an important character because he has arms. Uh, dude, the dude from Office Space. Oh, I, I want my red my red stapler. Liam Neeson. Dude, that's not Liam Neeson. Yeah, it's Liam Neeson from Office Space and 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 his, uh, name, is, his name is Stephen and Root. News Radio. Stephen Root. Oh, right, right, right. And he's doing Cringer. Wow. All right. Cringer, Cringer talks. Other guy from Office Space. Slackjaw. <laughs> doing Trapjaw. Trapjaw. Shit. <laughs> uh, I, I just can't. That's that's uh, that's uh, I reckon that fella would get his ass kicked, guy. I can't. But look at this. This Hen- is a wow. Henry Rollins. Henry Rollins. Like. 
The, Buck do, you know, do you know who this is? Yeah, it's Buck Ferguson from uh, from uh, Carol Channing. His show. name is Alan Oppenheimer. He's the original voice of He Man. What? Yeah, they don't have him doing He Man. She was in Wonder Woman and Justice League. She's doing the voice of Sorceress. Her name is Susan Eisenberg. I think that was Gal Gadot in Wonder Woman and Justice League. By the way, that well, she's obviously not Wonder Woman, oh. but she's in the movie. It oh. says up here. I'm not. Oh, is making, that Justin Long? I'm not making this up. Yes, it's Justin from Long from the Mac commercials from Galaxy he's Quest. He's the Mac. He's he, cool. He's He's the cool nerd. He's the Mac. I mean, everyone watched those because of the PC. But you're I mean, right. like I love. I told you know. I once told Hodgman, I really love what you did for PC people with those ads, yeah. and he just walked away from me. Oh, but it he, was the right response. He knows that. He knows that, right? Uh, Stone guy from Clerks, right? Yeah, it's Silent Bob. He's doing uh, Stinkor. Wow, that seems right. And uh, then back to the Nightmare B Man. I mean, what an incredible. incredible what, what, what about Finhead? I, I don't know. I, I, this is a lot. If you spend money on your voice artists. Yeah. You, well, you get professional voice actors. If you spend a lot more money, then you get real actors. Is it? it <laughs> I just wonder, like, wow. Just to be clear, I didn't mean to denigrate voice actors there. I think voice actors do something incredible. And one of the things I love is when I see a new animated show that's just real voice actors and not actor actors. Because the voice actors are good at doing voices. What they've done is they've really taken a Pixar approach to their voice actors. Because for whatever mm. reason, Pixar doesn't trust unnamed voice actors to do the, to do the work. No they, chuds at Pixar. It must be that names attract audiences. That's true. Even to cartoons. Yeah. Right? Like, you don't go to see Tom Hanks in Toy Story. You go to hear Tom Hanks in Toy Story. And apparently that means something to audiences. And so they figured that out at Netflix. Mm. They must be on to something. It's worth the investment. Let's pay all these people to do the voices of our cartoons. Maybe these people really love He-Man. Maybe they're just <laughs> yeah. super fans. Maybe they're, maybe they're just taking a pay cut. Honestly, I always thought it was really weird that Woody from Toy Story wasn't voiced by Woody Harrelson because they already have the same name. They're like ready to go. Can you imagine how good that movie would be if it was voiced by Woody Harrelson? Think that's, about yeah, it. That's good. I mean, he, about it. he was named Woody in Cheers, wasn't he? Right. Yeah. He plays his best characters are when he has the same name as him. I could imagine as an actor, it's much easier to do that because somebody says your name. You're and like, you're just like, you don't have to think, oh, that's me. Yeah. You turn your head really quick and you're right. like right there. Uh, did we? Yeah. Speaking of Disney, there's an Aladdin sequel oh, in the yeah. works. Aladdin. Now, did you... Oh, like Aladdin 2, The Return of Jafar? It's not Aladdin 2. It's just Aladdin. It's the Will Smith... Blue Genie. Are you fucking kidding me? Aladdin. Oh my God. Do you know how successful that film was? They made a lot of money. A with billion it. dollars they made. They had like a dozen billion dollar movies last year at Disney. This they is, we have, have problems. They didn't have a dozen billion dollar had, movies. This was one of a handful. And it was uh, so successful, which I got to be honest with you, came as a surprise to me too. Because when that poster came out, it was like Sonic the Hedgehog. It was like everyone was just hating on it, and I didn't think anybody would go see it. I saw it recently because it's on the Disney Plus. Yeah, it's just it's just there, and looking can, at you. I gotta tell you, that's not all that bad. It is not bad. You know, I was just thinking. You know, I'm gonna spend a couple hundred million dollars in a movie. I'm shooting for not all <laughs> that bad. I mean, th first of all, there's no replacing Robin Williams. Like that yeah. was the that was. If you're not gonna, if you're gonna decide not to make a movie, that's the reason not to make it. What hubris! You don't make a Will Smith would have to have to step into Robin Williams's. So what, having seen pointy, it, pointy, curly-toed shoes. What I realized they did was they said, "Look, Will," in convincing him to do it. If it took convincing, they would have said to him, "Will, we don't need you to be Robin Williams. We want you to be Will Smith." And all of the genie stuff, all of the stuff that Robin Williams did, yeah, we'll do that with CG magic, yeah. And it will be a special effect. Like the special effect will be the chaotic, you know, uh, the chaos that, that is the genie. Yeah. And you just bring the personality and the voice talent. And so he says, welcome to Earth, and then punches an alien in the face and then magics the monkey into an elephant. Earth. He does not say Earth. <laughs> he 100% does not say Earth. Isn't that the quote, though? Isn't That's that what the internet thinks he said. But I have gone back and listened to the movie. He says, welcome to Earth. I like that you represent. Very clearly and punches You represent Will Smith everywhere. Yes. Uh, I, so, so are they going to redo Return of Jafar? Is that what's happening here? No, the direct not. to video sequel to Aladdin from no, 1992? In, in fact, they have said that, that those direct to video sequels are their own thing and they're going in a whole new direction. A new direction. Wait, they, they're, what is it Star Wars calls the old EU? Expanded universe? Extended universe? You, you mean stuff that's no they longer They call it legacy, legacy content or something? That's what that is. Sure, whatever. Wow. It, it's a split Poor universe. Jafar. Split. 
So I got to tell you though, it's not it's not all that bad. Like if you grew up as I did, yeah, listening to Will Smith the the act, actor I'm slash sorry, rapper, not, not the actor, the rapper, yeah, and you knew every word to he's the DJ, I'm the rapper, yes. You're glad to see him doing that again, and okay. and there there are musical numbers in Aladdin that in, the ones that involve Will Smith are all great. I like the idea of him playing the character he plays in Bad Boys, but in a way that it's appropriate for me to watch with my seven year old. <sighs> this is not that. It's not. Well, no, no, but like he's a whippy rep, witty yeah, repartee. He's good. fast. He's quick. There's, there's a few scenes that are good that are like that, but yeah. it, he's not the star. The star is Aladdin, and Aladdin's not that great. Like I'm gonna say that he's like he's not. He just got some kid off the street. He's he's really sm- urchin. He's really smarmy. He's yeah. like trying to do the cartoon Aladdin. He just doesn't feel like a full fledged person. Well, Cartoon Aladdin's pretty smarmy. J- exactly. He but, like makes mistakes. He's got problems. I be- it's true. It's he's true. Character he's flaws. also a cartoon. And and yeah, what I true. want is more person like real relatable humanity from my people <laughs> in my in my in my Disney films. Ja- uh, Jasmine's great. She's fantastic. Mm-hmm. Um and but Will Smith is the star of the show. And and the musical numbers, there are many. The ones without Will Smith, I can do without, but the ones with him, I'm yeah. telling you. Sounds like a real it's mixed great. bag. I'm really glad that he's doing it. It feels like a B- Bollywood film. Like, so my seven year old daughter absolutely detests these live action Disney movies. She didn't like Lion King because it was way too scary with real lions. I haven't seen that yet, but yeah. She didn't like Jungle Book because it was way too scary with real animals. Really? She didn't really like Beauty and the Beast because she's like, I think I like the cartoon better, Dad. Oh, yeah. Like the dresses were pretty, but the hmm. cartoon was better. I haven't seen that either. Yeah. And then we haven't watched Maleficent because it's like Angelina Jolie is a witch. Seems like she would be terrifying. Oh, that'd be horrible. Yeah. Try Aladdin. I'm probably okay. For your daughter. Give it a shot. You, she might like it. My, my daughter, who <laughs> is a little older than yours, she's 10. We watched Aladdin. By the end of the film, she erupted in applause. Had she seen the original Aladdin, the real one? Yeah. So for me... The original Aladdin, the best songs are the I Can Show You the World, the ones that are not the Robin Williams songs necessarily. Right. So if they ruined those and made the Robin Williams songs, which weren't that great, the good ones, yeah. I'm going to be pretty raw about this Aladdin. Uh, that's pretty much what it is. That yeah. is pretty much what it is. Well, that stinks. Although the, the one, the, there is... The you know what? Fuck Disney too. This is the <laughs> anti-Netflix, anti-Disney podcast. What about Mulan? Are you looking I'm forward to that? I'm super stoked about that Mulan movie because it looks rad. I too am super stoked. Yeah. Do you think your daughter will be? No, it's way too scary for her. I can tell already. By no. the time she's like 10, yeah. she'll be able to watch it. It does look like like an Ang Lee. Like, it looks it, like it a, looks like Crouching Tiger. Yeah, it looks like an adult film. Like a yeah. real, n- well, It looks like we made it. It looks like it's not an adult I film. I didn't mean that. It looks like a film for adults. Chicka, wow, wow. <laughs> it looks like a film for... Like, it looks like they're making a martial arts movie yeah. that just happens to be about this character from a Disney Which movie. Which is crazy. But it, it looks like a martial arts movie made for Western audiences mm-hmm. about a Disney character children's movie that I think is made up entirely. I don't think Disney took some like classic story from China right. and was like, we're going to modernize this and westernize it and then released it. I think they just made some shit up which that means, happened to be set in China. Which means they can own it forever. Well, of course. I, you know what? Speaking of stories for kids, my, my kids just recently went to go see a, uh, a Harry Potter play. Uh, Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. You know about this? It's a two part. They watch both parts. It's a it's, no spoilers. I, I don't have them to give you. It's but I will tell you it is a two night performance. You have to buy two tickets. You well, bu- if you do the matinee, you can do the afternoon and then the evening, which is nuts because they're three hour shows. Yeah, but you have like three two hours in between. <laughs> so you go you you go for an entire three hour performance, and then you have to go back to see it again. For, like and apparently it's so good yeah. that you do. You do go back and see the second did, half. Did, I mean, did you, those books were really long, Jeremy. Joe Rowling's never written something short. Is her name Joe? Joe, J.K. Joe something. Joe K. Is Rowling. It Joe? Yeah, Joe. Uh, it's, it's, it's not the books. It's all new story. I know. There's summaries on the Wikipedia if you want to know what happened. Have you seen it? No. From what I understand, Will. Yes. You want to see it. I have a friend who saw it and said it was astounding. The special effects in this are unlike they yeah. raised the bar. They raise yeah. the bar for stage shows. They actually suck the soul out of the kid that plays Harry Potter's kid <laughs> with a Dementor on stage live every night. They have a new kid every day. <laughs> I'm telling you, like, my family came home. They said there are, like, 20 special effects in uh-huh. this thing. And every one of them, you're like, how did they do that? It makes Hamilton look like a pile of crap. <laughs> in terms, Oh, we got a spinning stage. La, la, la. Right, exactly, exactly. I, I did ask my son. I said, better than Hamilton? He said, no. But he loved yeah. it. He loved it. And he was really into it. So I, that's, a, that's a tangent. But... 
I wanted to put that out there. If you're in San Francisco, it's showing. If it's in London, where is it there. in San Francisco? Which theater is it at? Do you know? I don't know. Oh, because it's not the Orpheum is still Hamilton. Yeah, it, yeah. that'll be Hamilton well, most For, of this year. Yeah. Um, what what else? Uh, yeah, what else we what, got? What I'm still raw about the return of Jafar. Oh, that's the link to the voice thing that we talked about a while ago. Okay. Don't, I would skip it at this point. We've right. passed that. Okay. Well, you know what? Uh, now would be a good time to hear... Uh, Norman? An important message from Norman. Oh. Let's see if I can boost up this volume. He's got something to share, to share with, our, with our audience. This week's episode of This Is Only a Test is made possible with support from Lightstream. If you think about how much money you're paying in interest on your credit cards every month, you'll probably realize it's too much. But you can consolidate your credit cards into just one payment at a lower fixed rate and start saving money. It's easy with a credit card consolidation loan from Lightstream. Rates are as low as 5.95% APR with AutoPay. Lightstream believes that people with good credit deserve a better loan experience, and that's exactly what they deliver. One customer said, I heard about Lightstream through a radio program advertisement. I am so glad I had the courage to reach out and try their service. Top-notch customer support and service, very streamlined process, and no issues or regrets. And just for our listeners, apply now to get a special interest rate discount and save even more. The only way to get this discount is go to lightstream.com slash test. That's L-I-G-H-T-S-T-R-E-A-M dot com slash test. Subject to credit approval, rate includes 0.5% auto pay discount. Terms and conditions apply and offers are subject to change without notice. Visit lightstream.com slash test for more information. Heck, this is really your forte. I mean, I think of it that way because you, you got started in, at Ars Technica. Which it has tech in the name. Right it's in the right name. there. And then you moved on to be the editor-in-chief of Maximum PC Magazine. Yeah. And then you uh, founded Tested.com, which was, you know. The world's number one tech site. Everyone knows about Tested.com. <laughs> it's where pe- people are like, hey, Synonymous. I think tech, it's Tested. Um, and so here we are. We're yeah. in, we're in the, r- the real meat. This is the real meat. Everything up at this point has just been me yelling about Netflix. I thought we could chat a little bit about GeForce Now because I had questions about it yeah. when it launched a week or two ago. And it uh, sounds like you have some experience with it. I uh, went to their website and I uh, mashed the button that said, give me a free trial. Oh. And I did that. So what is a free trial? So, so there are two tiers of, of service. One okay. is free. Yeah. And you log into it, you have to create an account, you download a thing, and then I think you can play for like an hour at a time, and you might have to wait to start playing because you have to get in the queue behind all the people that are paying, presumably. Real briefly, this is a cloud-based PC gaming uh, service. Yeah, but the neat thing about it is, unlike, say, Stadia, uh, you don't have to buy the games from them. So they've been, this thing has been in beta for a year, maybe two, a really long time. Okay. Uh, they originally were like, Hey, we're going to have a store where you can buy games. You can just play them from the cloud. And then they beta tested. And everybody's like, no, we don't, we don't want to have to buy games in a different place. We want to buy all of our games on steam and origin and you play and because and I already have blizzard. Probably. Cause I already have in, all these games. Cases. I don't want to have another, I don't need another store. Yeah. So what they do now is you download this client, you sign up for the service, you download this client, and then you say, which game do you want to play? You just type it in. You're like, I want to play, um, yeah. I played Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, which I have, yeah. I picked because I played 3,000 hours of it, and I know I know what the game's supposed to feel like, and I wanted to test something I was familiar with. So I typed Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, I was like, okay, here you go. It, it opens up a remote window to a, a server that's hosted in the cloud, and you see your Steam, win- you log into Steam there. Wait, so it, it is a, like a remote desktop to, like a VLC? To, to like, a- like a... Not, not, yeah, okay. not a VLC, a virtual machine. That's what I meant. Yeah, so you're basically running your Steam on their cloud. Yeah. And then it pipes it down to your computer over video. Does it look like Windows? Like, are you seeing a Windows mm-hmm. desktop? Mm, no, it looked like... Steam looked like Steam, but it's like the desktop, there's no there's no Windows that you could see. But it is Windows, right? It's not Linux. I assume so. It can't be Linux. It wouldn't run everything. I mean, it only runs like a thousand things. Oh. So, but it runs like Apex Legends and stuff like that. So I assume it's, I assume they're running Windows and they have some sort of licensing agreement with Microsoft to de- to deal with that. Okay. You can't do normal Windows stuff in the on GeForce now that I I didn't like I didn't try to run Minesweeper or whatever, but but it just worked for the okay. most part. Okay. So you, so you, it's like, do you want to install this? You hit install on player on PUBG and like it installs in half a second faster than on my fiber. So it's already installed. I think it's probably cached locally or something. Like they have some sort of solution for okay. that. Okay. Um, and when you turn it on, 
it just starts playing the game like normal. Now, the resolutions were a little bit limited. It wants to play most stuff at like 720p or 1080p. Hmm. Um, you Is that what the video stream is? The video stream, I think, was 1080p. 1080. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, but you can't do 4K. I, I couldn't do 4K even though I have a 4K monitor. Um, the quality was kind of like it was definitely less good than my uh, than than you know like I have a 2080 Ti and a beefy computer. So like it definitely didn't look as good as the 2080 Ti and the beefy computer running locally. But like the first thing I did was dome somebody with a single shot rifle from like 200 meters. So iron sights. So like it felt just like PUBG. It worked reasonably well. There was a little more latency on the, on the video and there was occasional video artifacting, but it worked really well. Well, those are the two questions. I mean, when you, let's like, I was shocked that I was able to right out of the gate, like first, first or second shot was a headshot. I was thinking about doing one of my PUBG streams running GeForce now just to see if it impacts my play. Because I think that would be a fun test. Has anyone do- measured the latency? Uh, I think that they said they're looking for sub-20 milliseconds on the video latency. And th- that's what they're delivering? That's what they're delivering. And okay. my ping was more or less the same. Like, in the game, my ping was more or less the same. So presumably that's adding... So that's maybe a frame or two. I mean, that's not much. Well, I mean, I render at 120 frames a second on the desktop, well, so it's a little bit less But you're not. You're not getting 120 from Not from... GeForce you're only now. getting 60 from GeForce now. Yeah. So um, presumably... You assume your normal video latency is somewhere between like six and twelve milliseconds, depending on what your monitor is. Right. Um, so presumably, I'm getting an extra like eight or ten seconds of latency, maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less mm-hmm. on the render, but it worked. It worked pretty well. Okay. And the, the video quality, you said you saw a little bit of artifacting, like the, but. Uh, it was negligible. It was fine. Uh, the performance was pretty good. The the quality of the like the settings that it would let you set in the game were lower than what I can run on the desktop. But that makes sense because it's probably, you know. Yeah. Uh, the, the, so the other difference on the paid and not paid tier is that the paid tier, you get uh, access to RTX uh, GPUs. Really? On the free tier, you're limited to Pascal, which I think is 1080, huh. 1080 TIs. Okay. Whatever. Um, but yeah, like it worked. It was, it was, and it was, it's interesting to me that you can just play the games that you already have. Like that, you don't have to you've go buy. For. Yeah, you don't have to go buy new game, the same right. game someplace else. And like, if your saves are in the cloud, then your save just pulls down. I like I played a little bit of The Witcher the other night on it. So I guess it that, works pretty well. That makes a lot of sense for people who already have a library of PC games yeah. because they've been a PC gamer, but they don't now. They're maybe they're ready for a new PC. Instead of buying a new PC and spending a thousand dollars, they would sw- move to the cloud and they bring their library with them. That's kind of the, the the appeal, I would imagine. I mean, or if you travel or something like that. I like. I think. Part of the problem right now is that the ecosystem's a little bit thin. So, for example, there's no iOS client for the GeForce Now okay. thing. You can play on PC, Android, and the Shield, the Shield family of the Nvidia Shield family of devices. But I don't think that there's an iOS or Apple TV okay. client. But th- there's nothing holding them back from making those. You need Pres- a video streamer yeah. and a and an input streamer. Like yeah. you just need it's a data stream. Yeah. It's pretty straightforward. I, I it worked much better than I was expecting. I like I didn't try to play Mortal Kombat or something like that, but it's not like a fighting game with, where frame, you where frame perfect latency matters. But I also am not enough of a fighting game player for that to yeah. register for me. So, are you surprised that it's not a web app? Um, no, not really. You I can, mean, I feel like getting controller input into web browsers is is challenging. Is like, it? Like, y- I, yeah, I don't think so. I mean, I, I, you can. There's plenty of programs out there that let you test your gamepad inputs. Well, that's true. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, I feel like they, this seems like a pretty measured rollout and I think I got three months free for putting my credit card in. Yeah. So, um, do you think this is the future? Because no. we've been looking at this for a decade now of people trying from on live on of people and even steam now has the ability to play couch co-op games over the internet. That's amazing. Have you done that? Yeah. It's so good. It works great. Yeah. Um, and so that maybe there's something to be said for that but not for a fully fledged cloud based service i mean i i think i think the idea is the same as with stadia right like there are x number of million people few hundred million people that are invested in uh you know consoles pc maybe maybe high end mobile games yeah and then there's another you know 6.3 billion people in the world so if we can figure out a way to let those people play games without investing hundreds of dollars or thousands of dollars in hardware there's a potential market opportunity mm-hmm. right now this seems like an add on like like he- here's an interesting use for oh god 
I don't know why I have a timer going. Uh, right that's now, for uh, Norm. Oh, that was for Norm. That's yeah. the FaceTime Norm. So we might be trying that in a minute. Um, I don't feel. I, I was just saying. I don't feel like. I feel like if you like if you download Cyber, if you buy Cyberpunk, right, it unlocks. They didn't do a preload. You can hook up to GeForce Now and play it while it's downloading in the background. Funny. Right? Yeah. Like, you can get started and do that. I think that's a use case. If you travel a lot and you're places where there's decent internet, I feel like you could play your games remotely without having to schlep, schlep a gaming laptop that has 45 minutes of battery life with you. Um, I mean, that, oh, also Mac. There's a Mac client as well. Okay. Uh, so, so yeah. Or, or, like, if you have a Mac laptop and you want to be able to play your games... So you're saying that it. there are new markets for this type of service. It's not going to replace PC gaming. I, I mean, I think for some people it probably will, right? Like, the, I think that there's definitely people out there in the world who don't want to spend $1,500 or $1,000 on a new computer every three or four years. Mm -hmm. And and if you can pay five bucks a month and get something that's almost as good, but then you just use your laptop for or hook it up to a box that's plugged into your TV, that seems great. Terrific. Let it, let it rip. Ladies and gentlemen. Do we have a Norman Chan? We have Norman Chan live. Whoa! Whoa, it's like he's here. I know. He's so tiny. Isn't that amazing? Hey, Norm, what's the lottery numbers for tomorrow? I want to know. <laughs> uh, 42. Wait, don't six. just text me. Don't say it out loud. <laughs> this is amazing. Live via satellite from New is Zealand. It? Are no, you sure it's, it's satellite? It's, it's absolutely... It you know, there's... An underwater cable. You guys are cut from the same cloth. Yeah, see, this is why we get along. <laughs> Yeah, Will was convincing me it was definitely fiber optic. It's just nobody does satellite anymore. It's under. If there's a cable yeah. that the fishermen dropped underwater, the divers went in, and that's it's, how the photons are moving. Or electrons have, are moving. We'd have to wait half a second for Norm to respond to us. I'm thrilled by the latency. I mean, speaking of technologies, this is fantastic. Yeah. Well, they're using the AI to know what he's going to say before he says it, so they start <laughs> him talking before we we hear. Well, so what what can you tell us about why you're in New Zealand, if anything? Um, well, I think uh, it's um, – we can say that, of course, we're in Wellington, New Zealand, um, here with Adam and Joey. And uh, it is tradition for the tested team every couple years or so, it will be two years for me, uh, to visit our friends at Weta Workshop, which is where I'll be heading in about uh, 15 minutes or so. Wow. Uh, I'm in my hotel right now, if you can tell, uh, somewhere in nondescript Wellington. Um, and oh, nondescript hotel in beautiful Wellington, uh, but I don't want to say exactly where in case there are people listening who are also in town. Um, but we're here for the entire week and we are of course covering, uh, many of the projects that, um, well, I should say a small portion of the projects because they're working on so many projects, but a small portion of the uh, projects we're allowed to cover that we'll be sharing, um, hopefully later this year. I can't even say when, Wow. Um, but uh, every time I go to what a workshop, um, it we were talking about yesterday. It really feels not only like um, an effect shop, but it really almost it's like a, a Hogwarts. It almost feels like a university. It, it, the, the campus, the workshop is sprawling. It feels like a campus. Every time you walk into a room, it's almost like it's a classroom. There are artists working on benches, and then you know a head of department that we chat with. That's almost like a professor, and it really feels like we are. The doors are open to us to visit a, a Hogwarts-like institution. That's amazing. I mean, That's I, really cool. I, I assume that this is uh, not a tour that anybody can sign up for if they go and knock on the door. That is true. Um, although there's a tour that they do um, that's right adjacent to their workshop, the cave tour, which gives you literal uh, a peek inside windows inside the, their working workshop. Um, but uh, and with lots of the props and costumes that they've built. So that's available to the public. Um, but, but no, we're going inside some some closed doors with NDA signed. That's are, exciting. Are you and Joey going to go up into the hills and hunt for the wilder people? Uh, no, uh, although we did go uh, down the street here uh, in downtown Wellington where they film some of what we do in the shadows, the movie. It's where the vampires were had their night in the town trying to get invited into the bars. Uh oh, oh, those fiber optics. Uh, um, and Somebody the, the back with the cable. Uh, there, you're back. Sorry, you yeah. dropped out for a second. Oh, sorry. Yeah. What, what, downtown Wellington, lots of people, lots of places where they film movies, including what we do in the shadows. Cool. Uh, we've gone over the hill to the Miramar part of town and, you know, well, oh, that's where they shot that part of Lord of the Rings. That's where Gollum, you know, uh, was at the lake. That's where Sam did his first steps, the furthest he'd ever gone past the Shire, you know, stuff like that. That's hilarious. Cool. What we do in the shadows, that's that uh, comedic uh, vampire film. 
That is. I, it's really good. Yeah, with uh, with Jermaine from uh, Flight of the Concords. Uh-huh. I I haven't seen it because I I'm afraid of scary movies. But it's I, not scary. It's not scary. It's not scary. It is the least scary not vampire scary. movie I've ever oh, seen. Oh, good, because I love those guys. Have you seen Hunt for the Wilder People? No, Jeremy, you need to watch Hunt for the Wilder People. Yeah, it's a delight. Okay. And both of those are Taika Waititi yes. movies. Right, yeah, that's how I found out about these, because I was, I was researching the guy, because he seems like a big deal. He's very funny. Yeah, and he's in all his films. Yeah. Uh, can, can we see out the window by any chance? Is there anything that you can show us out there? No, it's just a city street. Oh. It's kind of overcast. It's, uh, it's summer. No. Uh, in here right now. But I want to believe you're in Hobbiton, that, you, that I can see yeah. the, the... Show us the round doors, Norm. <laughs> no, 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 it's just... Oh. I'm also disappointed that the video is right side up. I assumed you'd be upside down. It's always like this. I don't know how to the, do it. The, the, Apple auto corrects it with AI. Okay. Norm, thanks, um, for, thanks for taking a minute to chat with us. Yeah, this is the dad joke yeah. episode. Hey, good luck on the podcast today. Thank you, Will, for sitting in. Of course. And I will do a, a shout out. Uh, if you are listening to this on Thursday, you can go on Tested and you can watch a video of Adam on the stage set of Hamilton in San Francisco. What? Uh, where, Alexander Hamilton? Uh, that's right. That's They're right. waiting in the wings no. for you? <laughs> we were literally in the wings. Wow. <laughs> yeah. And, um, and and we got to handle and take a look at some of the props from the show. We have a bunch of videos from that visit uh, to Hamilton. And the first one comes out tomorrow. Interesting thing to note, the folks here in New Zealand they don't really have a connection with the musical. Can't imagine why. <laughs> yeah. But, but good natured all the same. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. They're wonderful I, people. Yeah, they love Sam Neill down there. <laughs> all right, Norm. Good to see you. I'm glad that you're still sporting the Walt Disney wear. Yeah, well, next time we see him, he's going to be wearing a Weta shirt. All right. All see right. you, Norm. See Adios. Ya. Thanks. He couldn't see me waving there, but I waved anyway. Isn't that impressive? That's like, the future, man. I mean... You know, it's the third time we've done that, and I like it all worked. Is like, he hearing us through your yeah, laptop speaker? Yeah, he oh, hears man. you through that microphone. We hear. Oh, you're piping in through. Yeah, we hear him through our headphones. What devilry is this? It's like the podcasting it's is way easier. Not all that hard. We used to do this the hard way with like headphone ins and outs, exactly. and it was a, like there was a splitter. Yeah, exactly. You had to run it into the mixer and out the other, out the thing, and like it was always. It was an engineering. You you had to do some like mental gymnastics where you're like, what's the route of the audio? And sometimes the person would hear themselves just looping endlessly, and it was a night. It was bad. I used to edit videos in co- in high school before nonlinear video editors, right? Yeah. And and I would uh, feed music. Did you use a Matrox card or something <laughs> to capture your video back then? I had a boom button. No, there was no capturing. Oh. I, this was tape to tape. And I would run the audio through a boom box. And I'd run the taped audio into the left channel and music into the right. Oh, yeah. And then I'd use the, the balance to fade between the two or mix them. Boom. I, I When I took video production in high school, we had one of those jog dial editors with the tapes and you'd have yeah. a tape up here and a tape up here and you could like mix it was a it was bad jog dials yeah jog dial. you got that jog dial all right let's talk some more tech uh i sp- love tech spacex specs you heard of them spacex elon musk's other company yeah uh they're gonna take you in outer space i don't want to go on if, the first flight if you got the money no th- I, I mean look don't <laughs> How did it go for that booster the other day, Jeremy? <laughs> well, they, it's 50th landing. You're not, thankfully, you're not going to be on the booster. You're going to be on the, the, the capsule. If everything goes well, I won't be on the booster. Right. But you're going to be on the capsule that they have proven. Yeah. Can, they've only crashed one or two of those. That they've proven can, can blast off and yeah. parachute down safely. Yeah. So that's what you're going to be on. Uh, they're going to take four people, four private citizens. Is Elon Musk one of those people? In the outer space. They're going to take you... Three times as high as the International Space Station. And they're going to allow you to exist in outer space for a period of time. How long? They haven't said. And then they're going to bring you back. Is this a suborbital flight or is it an orbital flight? They haven't said. But. Like a suborbital flight would be like 20 minutes. What's it going to cost? A couple hundred grand? They haven't said. (laughs) And they've, they've been Are they reusing <laughs> boosters? Is this like a booster that they've crashed in the ocean a few times? Or is this like a one that's a fresh off the line? That's probably a different price point. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want the, which Kickstarter tier are you going to? I don't know which one's worse. Buy in. On one hand, well, though, at least you know that one's launched three times successfully and hasn't blown up yet. On the other hand, you know, it's old. Yeah. It's probably got marks. Yeah. I don't want one with marks. I want fresh. Up. You want the one with the fresh paint on it. Yeah. Uh, the you, new rocket smell. I got to tell you. 
Um, I am curious how much it would cost. How that, much would you pay? Well, clearly not enough. I mean, this is for this is for four of the super rich. If you're okay, if Jeremy, if you have in the bank thirty five million dollars, right? Okay. Oh yeah. Uh oh. Let's turn that back down. How would, much would you pay to turn off notifications automatically when you're finished talking to Norm <laughs> on FaceTime? I I mean, honestly, if I had thirty five million dollars, I mean, I don't need. Ha- I, ha- you only need a few million. I only need a few months to live for the rest of my yeah. life. I'll I'll spend ten million dollars to go to outer space. Like that's you could have gone up to the space station for that a few years ago. That's an incredible opportunity. Yeah, I mean, that, that is an amazing and as a space nut, and I know you you are even more of one than I am. Yeah, like the idea of feeling weightless to being in orbit for even a t- twenty minutes would be like a, the biggest thing that I would ever do in my life. Something I never thought I could do. The thing that I get most out of VR is probably that sense of weightlessness. You think twenty minutes is enough though? Yeah, I don't think I would pay it for twenty minutes. Yeah, I mean, I, I do. I feel like it would because there's everything le- uh, leading up to it. There's the launch, which would be exciting. There's the descent, which would be even more exciting. Uh, uh, see, I feel like all that stuff is shit you have to endure to get a week of weightlessness. <laughs> a week? Well, I mean, certainly if if moon tourism existed, I would certainly sign up for it. Well, but here's the thing. When you go into zero G, there's a period of several days where your body adjusts, where you just feel terrible. Like, yeah. Like astronauts we've talked to have described it as like, bad hangover like your head gets all clogged because the fluid in your body is redistributing from the lower extremities where gravity usually pulls it up into your head do you think that that's because they spend so long up there no this happens in the beginning it's as your body oh. adjusts to microgravity ah. so the, like the fluid redistributes you feel like you have a horrible head cold yeah. like they're eating super spicy food to try to ream out their noses and and it's like and and also you have motion sickness often for the first few days oh no thank you so yeah so, like, I guess 18 minutes is, like, you're <sighs> going to be up there not long enough to be uncomfortable. Boy, you might get back and say, boy, I wish I had that $10 million back. Yeah, I wish I was there for a week. I could spend a, that $10 million on a lot of things. Yeah, I could, I could, you know, look, you could probably build your own rocket for $10 million. Buy a house in San Francisco. Yeah, a nice one. Something <laughs> with two bathrooms. <laughs> <laughs> They're partnering with Space Adventures, oh. which, which is actually a space tourism company. There's entire companies. Been a pretty grim market for the last few years for those guys. <laughs> <laughs> this entire companies like HQ is not in business anymore, but there is a space tourism thriving company called Space Adventures. And I guess they've been doing this um, for a while now. And they, so that they're partnered. They've said they won't reveal the cost. I hope it leaks because I do want to know. I'm just curious. Yeah, I, I have no perspective on this, but I, I want to know. I got to tell you, though. Um, I feel like if you're a space tourism company and somebody calls it, like I call the space tourism company, I'm like, Hey, I would like to go to space. And they're like, well, okay. Uh, how much money do you have to spend? And you're like, well, I have $10 million. And they're like, okay. Uh, <laughs> I was like, when can I leave? And they're like, well, we don't know yet. Well, what, what spaceship am I going to go on? Not quite sure. Right. How much is it going to cost? How much is it going to cost? No yep. idea. Yeah, Where am I going to go? How long do I get to stay? Nope. Right. We don't know that one either. They might tell you if you had the money, though. You Can know, you take a deposit? SpaceX is, had they, they've already promised one billionaire that yeah. they will take this billionaire around the moon and back, right? Yeah. Now, that's, who knows when that's going to happen. That's a hard thing. I've tried that in Kerbal before, and I've killed a lot of Kerbals just making attempts at that. Oh, good. I'm glad they're taking their time. Yeah. Uh, if you sign up for this, it's going to be less expensive than that one. So, you know, I, th- I think there's different ranges. And if this works out, maybe they'll do these things all the time. The cool thing about this, and I like this, like from a just general perspective of where we're going as a species, I like that instead of taking the best and brightest and using them to test out this new stuff, yeah. like the, the best test pilots mm-hmm. and the very smartest like Navy pilots and stuff like we did with Mercury. Right. Now they're just taking the dumb people with a shitload of money. The rich people. And they're firing them into space. And yeah. if it works out, great. And if not, that's probably fine too. Well, they're they're taking their money is what they're doing because yeah. I, this is like I think this is a funding exercise. So I know that's what I'm saying. Yeah, like do the science on the backs of the rich, not the not the poor smart people, exactly. the rich dumb people. Right. So this is actually what you will sit in if you pay X amount of dollars. You will go up into space, sitting in one of these chairs, surrounded by this very 2001 esque space capsule. There's no controls. Well, Who, who's flying the have, spaceship? Have you not ridden in a Tesla recently? Uh, there no, are no I don't controls ride in, in Elon Musk's vehicles. But, but more what happens if something goes wrong with the radio? More importantly to me is there's really not a nice window. Like if There's I'm, that one over there on that side. Look how tiny that is, and look where it is. We don't get to see what the 
uh, what they get to really see, like a little bit there. So do you ask for a window or an aisle on this one? <laughs> look You're at a these seats. Guy, right? These seats look like they're connected to some sort of shock absorbing, you know, yeah. things. Do these, these land in the ocean or do they land in land? Uh, Does the dragon capsule? Wow. It's, it's ocean, they right? It must land in the ocean. Well, like the Russian, the Soyuz lands, uses retro rockets and it just thumps you to the ground at like a 10 mile an hour impact. Does it? Well, where the where, wow. Russia doesn't have oceans? They land in the in the in the in Siberia. Wow, that's impressive. So anyway, yeah. I I that's what turned me off. I was all in on my ten million dollars till I saw this video, and I realized I wouldn't uh, really really get to see. A whole I don't lot. think you want a glass canopy roof in something that's going to re-enter from outer space oh, at I, thousands and thousands of degrees. Look, as long as I'm going to outer space, uh, if it might be my last twenty minutes. In existence. Yeah. Let me see. Oh, there's the controls. There's a keyboard and a touch screen up there. It's just like a Tesla. Oh. <laughs> I told you. I told you. It's just like. So is there not a pilot? They're paying. They're letting four people do this, and there's no like human that knows how to work the thing on the on the spaceship. That's the future, dude. It's the future. This seems like a bad idea. I'm really curious. And that brown is a weird color video too. Also, while we're while we're well, if you don't want to fly in outer space, maybe you want to fly around on the planet Earth. No, thank you. As Iron Man. Well, okay. I mean, do I have Jarvis or Friday and nope. I get to shoot black? Pew, pew, pew. Because now you are in control. Okay. A video surfaced this week and made the rounds. It went quite viral from a company called Jetman Dubai. This guy had a wing. He's not Iron Man. Iron Man doesn't have wings. It's more like the Falcon guy, right? Yeah, but his but Falcon guy's wings are cool. They're like bulletproof. You can move them in front of him. We've seen the Iron Man suit. In fact, Adam partnered with him for his television show. Being is this savage. the same guy? No. Oh, okay. We've seen that. Yeah. Uh, this is something entirely different. So this guy really is like the Iron Man suit with, as you said, wings. Yeah. And he, there's a video of him. I can play it. He hovers uh, in front of some sort of launch pad. The hovering looked a little hinky uh, when I watched hovering, this video. The hovering actually looked a lot more comfortable than the Iron Man suit, because uh, he's strapped in there. He's not responsible for, you know, holding himself up. It looked he, like he was having a cup of coffee there, right, just then. The Iron Man guy really has to learn all new forms There's of balance. There's a tripod, yeah. Uh, whereas this guy really is just sort of staying there, hovering, and then... You think his feet get hot? The most interesting thing is he goes horizontal, and off he goes, and then... What? And then the video dies. Is that really all I get? Oh, no, here you go. There he is. And then he... What is oh, that? this is... No, I want no. to see the whole thing. So there, there he goes. Look at there that he helicopter is. He, coming he, up on him. He's covering now. He's perfectly at ease with himself. He's done this before. How is he controlling this is the question. You know, he's got... Uh, you have a joystick? Move wand controllers. Oh, God. And then, uh, anyway, he goes terribly fast off into the horizon and then shoots straight up. And you, you th honestly, when I saw this, I was like, this is going to be revealed in a matter of hours as a fake because it just looks absolutely, it looks too good. absolutely impossible. Um, Look, in Dubai, you can do anything you want. In Dubai, you can be a new man. <laughs> I know. Yeah, it, it was, it's no surprise that, that this happened in Dubai. This is the one. Then he takes zoom, off, zoom. goes horizontal, and okay. then just like unbelievably shoots straight up into the sky and just goes hundreds of meters never to be seen again vertical and i i just don't know how he's surviving those g forces how he's maintaining control of the craft it's incredible that that this is possible i don't know how he landed <laughs> i mean does he have a, Look, a, a he has parachute? a wing he can glide right i don't does that glide i don't know one way to find out what an incredible incredible he's a billionaire? feeling uh i think that the company probably has money there's a lot of people with money in dubai yeah that's true as i understand what is it. the number on the side of the wing what number? It says like 154 on that little LCD screen right on the front edge. See? Yeah, do not know. Do not know. Huh. So. Well, that's interesting. That is more. Oh, he parachuted. That's what, what I figured. This yeah. is more like what I expected the segue to be. Oh, you mean Ginger. Project Ginger. Yeah. Right? We talked about that on the old Maximum BC podcast. Yeah, I bet. Years and years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. when Dean came in, showed it to 10 select people or whatever it was, and everyone came the out world. of there saying, this is going to change the world. Change the world. The way we get to work is all different now. I mean, in fairness, you did just buy a couple of electric scooters for your family. <laughs> so it's like they were half right. Yeah, exactly. This is like personal flying machines. Yes, please. This really? Is Would you use that thing? That thing looks like, you, uh, like there's 50 ways he could have killed himself. Within the two, 10 seconds of taking off. I'm shocked he didn't. Yeah. It really looks dangerous. Well, that was, he was the fourth test pilot. 
<laughs> they don't show the first three videos. It really looks dangerous. Yeah. And I imagine there's got to be some autopilot on it because there's no way he's he's maintaining control. He has to be the speeds. attitude. The, alti- the attitude yeah. on the on the vertical flight had to be computer assisted. Yeah, they put some kind of Arduino gyro in there for sure. Definitely an Arduino, <laughs> not rated for human flight. <laughs> I um, I there's no there's no amount of money that would get me to try that thing. Oh really? What about the the ones that just go on the water? The ones that shoot water out the bottom. And the, they're hooked to a jet ski? Yeah. Yeah, I'd do that. Yeah, me too. That looks fun. That's basically almost the same feeling. I mean, we used to have an air chair when I was a kid. Do you know what the air chair was? No. It was like a surfboard with a little chair, and then out the bottom of the chair, there's a pole that goes down four to eight feet that has a hydrofoil on it, and you could use that. You could pull it behind a boat, yes. and it like you ride up, up in the air. I've seen that. Yeah, I ate shit on that thing harder than anything I ever did on, on water skis. Uh, oh, God. Well, because, like, you get up, and as soon as the front edge catches you're you... You're like, I'm you, feeling good. You pivot from whatever height you have the chair yeah. sat at, then you're pancaking into the water while also still being pulled forward. <laughs> you learn a lot about physics. You get a that. lot of whiplash with that thing. So oh I can't imagine... I got to imagine that the jet ski thing is even worse. Your face is still red to this day from that Probably, experience. yeah. Wow, no, I, 30 years ago. I don't like water skis in general, but I would like to be attached to a water jet and float. As I said, I want to be weightless, and I don't think that... Have that you ever done the sensory deprivation tank, Jeremy? Yes, I don't care for it. Really? Yeah. Too quiet? No, it's the thought of, like, how many other people have... There's a lot of farts in there. ...soaked in this salty water. A lot of farts. I'm not interested. It's, the farts are one thing. It's just, like, people grime. It's just, like, residue. Well, I assume they have filters on those things. I don't want a filter. I want all new water. I don't want the thing to be scrubbed down. You know how much salt they have to put in those things to make you float? Hundreds of pounds. Yeah, it's like the Dead Sea. Yeah. Uh, I, you know what? I, and the, the separate sensory deprivation aspect, I could take it or leave it. Okay. I didn't find myself. If you could put VR goggles while you were in there, would you be back in? I just want to listen to music, maybe. Okay. Put on some Mozart. Yeah, okay. That'd I be can nice. see that. I don't need to be sensory deprived. That seems like torture. Hmm. You like them? Never done it. Oh, okay. I don't want to be in the, the tank seems really gross. One of my favorite components of Tested.com back in the day when you were doing things here was the 3D print of the week. <laughs> Who could forget... Will no, Smith. It's called Print the Mystery Object, Jeremy. Print the Mystery Object. Who God could forget? Damn it. You would stand up in front of say, look. Hey, everybody. Welcome to uh, Tested. I'm Will. <laughs> I'm Will from Tested. It's time for another mystery object. This week, we're going to do this the same way we do every week. We're going to print a thing. Yeah. And while it prints, you're going to guess what it is. And you're post your answer in the comments below. We'll be back at the end of the print. Wow. Let's go. You really remember your script. That's not at all how I said it. And then uh, for some reason, like, uh, it was supposed to be a mystery. I, I never understood that. You'd, well, we put it in the t- title. It was a joke. You'd watch it, and you were supposed to type in the comment of what you thought yeah. it would be by the end of the video. Yeah. Anyway. It was for kids. Now there's a 3D printer that can print things in it with, uh, not in layers, Will. This thing was amazing. This is an amazing printer. They print things all as a single The torture piece. tugboat was printed. Now, you look at that, and you say, that's a little janky, but that is actually two millimeters wide. Yeah, that's oh, sorry, a one centimeter, millimeter, uh, two, one, two centimeters, so yeah. about 20 centimeters uh, wide. It looks like it's 10 centimeters, judging by that ruler. Oh, you're right. The, the print volume is two, is two centimeters, two so centimeters, this fits yeah. within that. Yeah. That's actually remarkable. And they do this by, like, rotating it in three dimensions, and yeah. it's, almost like a, it's almost like a spin cast. Yes. Where you, where, yeah, it's, it's amazing. So it's laser lithography. It's like stereolithography, lith- lithography, which currently is a 3D printing technology layers, that does layer by yeah. layer like every other 3D printer. But that takes time. What, that has certain benefits, but it takes time, as they all do. This is all at once. It, it rotates it, as you said, and then it uses UV light to cure this resin in place in all at once in different depths all at the same yeah Yeah, it's amazing it's wild i'm very into it yeah and as i said the print volume is uh quite small two centimeters that one's a tugboat jeremy that's penchy i'm just saying it's a mystery object it's a tugboat (laughs) you do know that's benchy though right because that kind of benchy is huh i'm familiar with benchy okay because that kind of came around after you finished doing the back back in my day we used that tower with the stairs inside the tower. You know, the, yes. the, the it looks like a rook, that but was, it has stairs inside that was a bunch the, of little that windows. That was the big one for, yeah. uh, for the uh, SL, whatever. Yeah. I kind of want to get back into 3D printing. I've, I've missed it. I've, I've been doing a lot of laser cutting lately. Yeah. And I feel like the 3D printer and the laser cutter are, are both at a position where they might help each other out. Oh, they're they're like uh, the... Like peanut butter and, and ch- sardines. They're, they're, they are the married couple. They're the ideal couple. They, yeah. they, they, you put those together with a few screws and nuts and you could make anything. Yeah. Uh, yeah. As long as it doesn't have any moving parts or electronics. Um, uh, Sony is struggling to keep the PS5 price down. Uh, you, 
are you going to buy a PS5 no matter the, the cost? What if it costs $470? I don't know. That's what they think it, it's going to have to cost. You know, the last couple of generations, like PS3, Xbox, PS4, Xbox One, even like the OG Xbox and the PS2 and the GameCube, I ended up owning all of the consoles. I don't know that I'm buying a console this year. Like, I don't think I need an Xbox because I have a high-end PC. Yeah. Can run all the games. Microsoft releases all their stuff on Windows now. Yeah. So there's, like, no exclusives. I don't need another box in the living room. I'm probably not getting an Xbox. Yeah, it really is about the exclusives for a lot of people. Yeah. It's also, if you don't have a PC, this is how you, yeah. game, how you game. I think what they're putting into these new consoles is going to be worth whatever they charge for it. They're not making much money on them. It's just a matter of, is it too much? I mean, people are going to base it off of their... Uh, the bar they have right now, which is the PS4 Pro, which is $400. Yeah. They don't think they can do it for $400. So I, Sony's going to wait out, see what Microsoft is going to price theirs at. We probably won't know prices until E3, which is in three or four months. Well, Microsoft's doing staggered tiers, too. They're doing two different... They, like, there's a the yeah. Premiere thing, and then there's a lesser version. Yeah. You so could, so you, you, you could go console-free. I mean, we'll have a Switch. We all could. I like we the Switch. All, we all could go console free. And, yeah. and that was another story that surfaced. Like, gamers are fine with them not entering the next gen. Switch. Uh, Nintendo. Well, I mean, so so the question, I mean, as always happens with new console generations now, there was a story yesterday about, is this the last console Sony's going to produce? This is the PS5, the last console Sony's going to produce. Which, of course, when they released the PS4 and the Xbox One, the analysts were all saying people don't care about, you know, traditional games anymore. And then it turns out, because they were looking at mobile trends and stuff yep. like that, and then it turns out that, that, you know, billions of people, millions of people bought those consoles because they like playing Call of Duty and they like playing Spider-Man and they like playing Halo and they like playing Gears of War. Um, and FIFA. So I, you know, I don't know. I assume we're going to keep seeing new consoles. I, I think Sony really torched themselves on the PS3 generation. Cause remember they launched that thing at like 500, $600. Yeah. They tend to leapfrog one at one area. Everyone gets it wrong one cycle. Yeah. But, but I, I mean, I don't know. I don't know what Microsoft's focus on ecosystem is great for people who play games. And I don't know that I have any need at all to buy an Xbox ever again. I, I, I'm waiting and seeing on the PS5. I that's don't know. I have question. a PS4 regular and I do not have a, a, an Xbox. I bought a PS4 Pro to do VR stuff when the PS4, PS, cause, because my one of my PS3s died and I needed another one anyway. But the, I wouldn't have paid the extra hundred bucks. I wouldn't have upgraded had I not had a dead machine that I needed to replace. The thing that will sell me on the PS4 or 5 of any kind will be its VR capabilities. And that's not going to launch. There's no new special headset launching with PS5. But when that comes to market, well, that's the, what will get me on board. I know Xbox has no plans. And speaking of VR. The VR Minute. Virtual reality this week. Let's literally do a minute on this. Um, I'm being told to wrap it up. I've started a timer. Uh, do we have a time limit? No, no, I just started a timer for the minute. Uh, you um, already you got 50 seconds left. Uh, th there's a void opening here in San Francisco on Market Street. I have a void right now did, in May. Did you know? Yeah. You've done the void. No. Y you haven't? No. Oh, no, I did the one in, in, in yeah, New York. Oh. No, no, in New York. Which one was that? Ghostbusters. Go I haven't done Ghostbusters. That's not going to be here. They're going <laughs> to they're gonna have the Star Wars one, Avengers. Okay. Um, they're going to have another one that, that is not branded. And ah, I forget the last one they're going to have. But Teddy Ruxpin. <laughs> He-Man Masters of the Universe. It's, it's uh, Avengers. Oh, Jumanji. That is branded. No, I know. No, but the, the fourth one is not branded. It's, oh. it's called... Uh, Nic Nicodemus, Demon of Eva Ev Evanishment. Well, that's a terrible name. Uh, it's hard to say. But it, it, that one's only $20. The others are 40 What? Uh, yeah. For how long? An hour? Dude, 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 dude. You got to try it. You got to try The Void. I did. I did the Ghostbusters one. I don't remember being 40 bucks, but I might not have paid for it. <laughs> this is the problem with being me. Um, how, why, how long is it for 40 bucks? It's it's worth forty bucks as I mean, long as it needs to be. Honestly, like this is this is the, really the potential of VR. I mean, like yeah. going into a space and being able to touch everything, and one to one mapping of your environment and feeling heat and feeling your know, shaking floors and the doorways you walk through and weapons that you pick up and it all being physically real. Yeah, it's cool. Escalates the the 
the immersion factor a thousand times. Is this the one that's opening in Westlake or Westfield Center in the basement? Yeah, whatever. Nice. It's on the Market Street. Yeah. So anyway, it's opening on the 20th, I believe. Whew. Yeah. Uh, so that's exciting for us. Uh, there's a Prince of Persia, not Void, but there's another escape room company that's making a Prince of Persia one. Um, they previously have done another Ubisoft property, and I did that one. Uh, and Assassin's Creed. Assassin's Creed, yeah. Yeah. And it was that was actually really good. And what they do even better than Void is they create puzzles that require cooperation, mm -hmm. and that's awesome when you because you can hear people. They have microphones. You're in VR. And You're in the same space. Yeah, shared, but That's sometimes cool. divided. Oh, you're yeah. actually in different rooms when you do it. So physically, no, you're not in the same space. But yeah, they, yeah. but they so they can control whether or not you hear your. We we built a couple of out. escape room prototypes a few years ago, and it was it, it was really fun. Finally, uh, so um, Twitter user, go internet. Uh, Josh and uh, Ch Chittish uh, tweeted a fun fact that uh, okay. noted, observed on the Steam. Uh, that VR is now more popular than Linux huh. and almost half as popular as Mac OS. Well, you heard it here. Stop development on Linux every we start building VR. That's quite impressive. Now, now, you say to yourself, that's that's a statistic that... Does that mean the number of people who well, are, uh, do the Steam hardware survey that say they have Steam VR installed? Yeah. Well, okay. I, yeah. yeah. Or, or, that's or, it's, or it's test out that they do. Yeah, yeah. On the one hand, these are, these are small numbers. Like, uh, you, you, got, you know... A lot of active users on Steam. It's true. It's true, but really only... Um, the Linux is, is 0.9% of Steam. So you're bigger than that, you know, so you got 1.31%. Uh, Mac OS is 3%. Uh, so y it's like climbing up there. There, I do think VR has hit an inflection point last year with the release of the Quest being very crucial to that in terms of the price point and getting people on board and, and then Link actually allowing you to use Steam. Uh, but it's, it's an interesting moment in here where we are now seeing VR taken more seriously, or at least as seriously, as the smallest platforms on Steam. And, you know, maybe you want to write home about that. Maybe you don't. But I think it's exciting. I'm happy for them. I'm happy for VR. And that's where we're at. You're happy for VR. I love VR. I thought so. I thought. I'm a fan. No uh, quest numbers on the VR survey, which is interesting this time. Yeah. Huh. Uh, so you, anything you want to promote? What do you want to talk about? We're done with the show. Oh, this is it? This is it. That was really a minute. I was told. the shortest I was VR minute ever. Told to wrap it up. Oh, wow. So uh, it up. Uh, I uh, have a new podcast. It's called Brad and Will Made a Tech Pod, my friend Brad Shoemaker it's, and I. That's a great podcast. It's not. Well, thank you. It's not brand new. You've been doing it for a few uh, for We're a couple months now. We're on episode like 22 now, yeah. I think. Uh, the idea basically is we do a single topic each week. So... Um, you know, instead of talking about the weekly news, which is a perfectly fine thing to do on a technology podcast, I feel like that market is covered. Yep. Uh, we dig deep into things like how uh, NAS servers work or how networking works or how um, uh, last week, the last two weeks, I actually, we wanted to talk about Windowses. So we made an ordered list of Windowses from our favorite to our least favorite over a 10 day, uh, two week period. Uh, no spoilers. Uh, and next, and then we do Q and episodes every few episodes. So we, if you have questions, we can answer questions for you. Brilliant. Um, you can find that at techpod.content.town. And then also I play PUBG and stuff on Twitch in the evenings. Where can people find you there? Uh, twitch.tv slash not that Will Smith. Ah, very good. Yeah. Will and, Smith was taken. And there. what's your Gmail address? <laughs> no, thank you, sir. <laughs> very good. Thanks for listening, everybody. Uh, we'll be back next week. I may not be here next week, but our friends, Kishore and Norm promise they will be. Mm. Maybe there'll be an empty seat for our friend Will Smith here. I'm not sure. Not sure. We'll see. Always good to have you, Will. Always a pleasure, Jerome. Really appreciate you answering the, hey, the who's, call. Who's the, out, who's the outro from this week? Justin, a.k.a. Speed, has one called Squirting in Real Time. Gross. Hi there, I didn't see you. That's it. It like oh, it's squirting in real time into any number of people. No. I love this. Unsubscribe. I <laughs>